Welcome, Facebook. Thank you, Dustin, for being uh, the perfect countdown guy this week. We talked about it last week, so thank you for that. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. We hope that you are having a great week so far. Uh, I know I am, and I know that the collective group here is, for the most part. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're going to be starting episode 76 um, and getting into tonight's episode. But before we do that, we always like to encourage you to like and share. We've been getting a lot of shares, and that's what's been growing this thing. We had over 4,000 views last week. Um, wow. Which, yeah, is it, I mean, last time, I figured it already went over. Uh, last week, I think, I don't, yeah, oh yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was over 4,000. It was 3.9 uh, by Saturday. Yeah. Whatever you say, stay on the internet for a second. Can you that do that? I'm working. Yeah. 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 Can you try to straighten that out if you look at the feed there? Yeah, so. While we have the, uh, while I'm sharing all this stuff, we're getting some people out there. Being at that kind of level, we thank you for all the shares and likes, um, and we'll introduce our it's the bottom characters. bottom knob actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the evening, once we get started with the audio, but yes, please like, please so share, be live. So and if you didn't, what's up, Tyler? How you doing? Go back, what's up, Paul Waller. Go, ahead. <laughs> go back and look at last week's because it was a lot of fun, um, and uh, this week's going to be a lot of fun too. So. Yeah. You got your feet up now. Hey, Paul. Hey, Tyler. I'm sharing right now, so I'm sorry I can't see anyone else that's on there at the moment. Let me know if that's better. Same. Trying to make sure. Josh and Aaron, welcome. Dave, you haven't had a cigar in like a day, so can I go ahead and light it up? Sure, buddy. Yeah, light it up. Get, get, get it going here. Nice. All of us are a little red. Well, not Steve, but Aaron and I. Two of us. Better yeah, go ahead. They kind of changed the, the look. Yeah, a little bit. All right. All right. Ultimate cigar experience. Hope you guys are all sharing. What's everyone drinking tonight that's on the live right now? What's everyone drinking at the moment? Um, if you're sitting out in this hot weather within the Midwest and even the South, we're pretty much hot everywhere. I saw on the weather it's map just today. It's, but it's just hot. <laughs> if you're sitting out enjoying yourself, what are you smoking? What are you drinking? Like what Steve said. So let us. Uh, Enjoy the conversation. We've really enjoyed the conversation. Last week was funny. Last, Last week was a fun episode. With the <laughs> amount of questions between yeah. Bobby and Ryan and pretty much everyone else. Yeah, I'm hoping that we get some of the same kind of involvement. I know it's not quite as much of a like fun game show type of, of a topic tonight, but we're going to be doing uh, the struggle of consistency. So that's going to uh, that's going to go to everywhere in life, as I mentioned on the Instagram story. You guys follow us on Instagram, but uh, hopefully you do, and, and you guys can contribute to the conversation, get something out of it, and then also we're trying a new one, the George Remus tonight, so we'll we'll get into that here. Yeah. Is that what you just poured? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Thanks for Josh is having a problem tonight, yeah. so it's okay. <laughs> What's up, Channing? Good to see you. Hope you're still there, Paul. Good to see you. Good All to right, see you, you earlier. <laughs> ready that's, to roll? Yep. That's really good. Good. Yeah, well, wait, should I, wait, wait. <laughs> should I say it? Just hold on. Okay. Growing audio now. All right. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. I'm Jake Sanders, along with Steve Crane, and we make up the Bourbon and BS podcast. And this is episode 76. That's right, folks, 76. And we are accompanied tonight by our good the friends. The very first ever guest, by the way. Yeah. Wow. You're right. Just hopping right in there. <laughs> the Jumping head. all You're over right. the... Uh, and I never came back. There must be a reason, and I'm no, curious to find out. I thought we arrived at that conclusion. You did. You came he back He was barely once. here when he was here the I last know. time, honestly. You you made, Steve, Steve made a lot of fun with me then. You were still here. Yeah, you made it easy. So Joshua Porter, <laughs> our very first guest ever, and Aaron... Sagai. Sagai. I always mess up your last name. I apologize. <laughs> So thank There's you. a T on the front of that, yeah. by the way. It's a so, sign on everything. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for being on tonight. How are you? Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I'm doing, doing good this week. I mean, I've been home by alone uh, with no kids for like the last four days. And Tatiana oh, yeah. and I have just been, uh, I mean, it's just been All right. party time. I mean, you just been <laughs> smoking cigars and yeah. other stuff. Yeah, we had ladies. <laughs> we had margaritas, nice. and now it's bourbon tonight. So There you go. How nice. about you, Aaron? Had a great week. 
just now we're down the middle. Yeah, yeah. you had a busy day though, right? Yeah. You said today. Did you say that's consistent? <laughs> we haven't got to that yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh will lead to it. I'm pretty <laughs> jumping around. Yeah, Josh will lead to it. We are going to be discussing what tonight, Steve? What's our topic? Uh, the topic tonight's going to be the struggle of consistency. That's the, the topic name. Yeah. So as we get into this, uh, we'll go over the the George Remus that we've got tonight, a bourbon. Yep, thank uh, you for getting that. Kentucky bourbon. And then, you're welcome. And then uh, Padron, which is our featured cigar from our sponsor, Tinderbox of Easton. Yes. So it's a Padron 3000 um, <laughs> Maduro. Aaron with the product placement there. And so thank you, Tinderbox of Easton, Brian Joyce, for, for sponsoring the podcast yep. with the, the help of the featured cigar. And then also um, we've got uh, the Romeo Julieta 1875 Bully Size as the second cigar, which is from Altidus Cigars, Romeo Julieta. So thank you. I know we got Paul on here. Aaron's just going to be our hand model for right now. That's great. <laughs> 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 That's great. We don't do that. Let everybody know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. whatever. Everybody <laughs> it's good. It's very good. It's good. Is it, is, I thought it was just Romeo and Julieta. No, no, it's a, it's a soft J. Oh, okay. Julia, Julia. There you go, you know. <laughs> nice. All right, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> what do we got? Uh, anything coming up this week? I think that's it. No, not really. I just got back from Florida. It was nice to meet with Paul and Alex from Altidus. Mm-hmm. Cool. Hopefully some good things come about, and I'm praying for that, but we'll talk about that on a later episode. So yeah, <laughs> right. we'll wait for now. Absolutely. But yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in tonight, we talk about whiskey, we talk about cigars, and we talk about a life topic, and that's what separates us from all those other yahoos out there. And we appreciate every one of you for tuning in. So uh, by the way, that makes it that doesn't make it easy when you bring up these heavy subjects, and I'm like, we're here to drink bourbon and cigars. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, I've been around you when you're drinking, and that's not a problem for you. Really, I get deep. Yeah, well, everyone does. That's the point. You try. Yeah. That's why we do this. <laughs> That's the point. That's why we try. do this. The truth talker. Yeah, exactly. The spirit. No, it's good. <laughs> so yeah, episode 76, let's, let's get going here with the, the bourbon. But I mean, I will say that it was nice having uh, Josh and, and Aaron on tonight just because you guys yeah. have actually been on several times, but it was way back. Yeah. And it was while. before Facebook Lives, before we had three, 4,000, you know, a week. Yeah. Views and uh, the audio listeners and everything else, I and mean, we were going through a lot of those ups and downs. As Not sure figuring things <laughs> out. Um, yeah, we had that, the mic hanging. It was like a weird angle when we were on Instagram. <laughs> uh, when Josh was on the first time with Mike Fry, it was kind of a trial run. That was episode one. And uh, going back and listening to that, you can actually hear the the, the space heater also because it was. It was like level two, I think. Snow emergency, so it was. Yeah. We didn't mean for it to be an episode. Those are all issues I deal with every day. I'm in the film and video business, so. Yeah. Yeah. FYI. You also have a smoking shed that's I insulated. Mean, www. Yeah. Yeah. What? No, go ahead. I yeah. Mean, yeah. How do we get that? I I'm a badass.com, yeah. right? No. I'm skin- <laughs> I am skinnysteve.com. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're right. No, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Diving into the Jordan, George Remus, huh? Yeah, absolutely, please. All right, everybody who's got some? Thanks for having us. Right? Okay. Very nice. Well, so, thank you, Steve, for grabbing the George Remus, the straight bourbon whiskey. You, Steve. And well, it is non-chill filtered. It's 94 proof, so 47% alcohol by volume. And, cool thing is, uh, it is not actually a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Come on. So, guess where this comes from, That's Steve? Easy. MGP, Midwest so, Green Products. The bullshit of that is, is that I'm looking up and down aisles for stuff we haven't had, which I found out that we, <laughs> of, of our 75 episodes, we've had over 90 bottles of bourbon featured on this podcast. Yeah. So to go into your normal stores and on a, a, a non-baller budget at the moment, um, we are basically trying to get bottles that we have not had on the podcast. And so that's part of this this topic is, you know, the consistency of it. No matter through the trials and tribulations. <laughs> We're really consistent with this. With what? With MGP. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's, it's like, hard not I, mean, to be. I can start going Irish. I can start going Scotch. And it's like, yeah. even like when, when Jake wasn't on for a few weeks there, when he was at the, the Tinderbox, it was one of those yeah. things where, you know, he's like, I'd really like to do a bourbon. It's like, there's no goddamn bourbons left. I mean, like, just in Ohio to buy on the shelf in a normal yeah. day, it's yeah. like, all right, we'll go with the Old Crow. We'll go with, like, I was going to, you know, Old Granddad. It's like, nothing wrong with those. We'll have to go to those at some point. But it's like, if, unless someone wants to dig into their store picks, I mean, like, we're running out of bourbons. Of the everyday availability. So right. what do you do? I get the one that says Kentucky Straight Bourbon thing. I'm like, oh, it doesn't. Yeah. Though. 
Straight bourbon whiskey. Oh, just straight bourbon whiskey. But at least it's a burp. Yeah. At least it's <laughs> yeah. a fucking burp. It is a burp. I was still looking at that. But not, it doesn't matter. But not all hope is lost. Yeah. Jake, Jake will tell you about it. Not all hope is lost because this is the very first product that is MGP, their flagship. This is under their face. It is not done by another distillery that bought barrels from them and that is labeling it as something else. This yeah. is them. Right. Um, so I'm sure that a lot of people are asking, you know, who is George Remus? And he was a very famous uh, apothecary and kingpin during the Prohibition days. Nice. Um, so I don't think it matters either, because it's really good, too. So. <laughs> no. But mean, the story is cool, amazing. story, yeah. It's, it's really, really good. Story about it. A lot of people like the story. Uh, okay. I like the story. All right, now, so let's get into it a little bit. So the bootlegging world, so George Remus was a lawyer in uh, Chicago, and he was, at the time, making pretty much close to a half a million dollars in today's dollars at that time. So yeah. very, very wealthy man. Um, he was a lawyer for a lot of the criminals, along with Al Capone, uh, and a lot of the, the hierarchies of the criminal underworld during that time in Chicago. So he thought, you know, during Prohibition, why not me? So what he started doing, but he, did, he, went, about, he went about it a different way. Um, what he started doing is when all the distilleries, when, when all the distilleries started closing their doors um, during Prohibition, he started buying them all up. He started buying pharmacies and such. And so what he did is he got a license. He was one of the, I believe there were six to ten different licensing um, distilleries working at that time. We've discussed that before. But um, he was one of them and he owned a few and he got that liquor license and he would sell uh, medicinal whiskey through his own pharmacies. Um, interesting part is that it was rumored that when he bought up all the distilleries and the pharmacies, that his employees, after they would ship it off to the pharmacies, his employees would hijack themselves and then sell the, the stolen whiskey illegally. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Those are good times. Yeah. Very good times. <laughs> so that's where he made all of his money um, towards the end of his days uh, in the mid 1900s. He uh, settled down in Cincinnati, Newport area, really? um, and basically built a uh, pretty much a campus of distilling. Huh. And uh, there was a little bit of you know dysfunction between his own family family's lives, but. He uh, died a pretty wealthy man, regardless. But um, was it mafia hit? No, his uh, wife took pretty much all of her half of his money. But at that time, there was still a lot of money. But anyways, back to the whiskey. It is a high rye mash bill, so their most popular blend. I gotta end it. And he died. But the whiskey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was it's good. Like, yeah, it is, it's great. I'm sure. Probably. Probably. It's pretty close. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of people think that he's the, you know, he's not the father of bourbon, but he's pretty damn close. Really? Yeah. What does it say on the bottle? It says something about that on the bottle there. Yeah. So. It talks about the story. It says <laughs> the king of the bootleggers. Bootleggers. That's says, what it was. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. In or a quote. Now, how will my headstone read? I suppose it will be king of the bootleggers. End quote. <laughs> and that was circa, you know, 1920. <laughs> nice. But, there you yeah. go. So it says on the bottle, from apothecary to kingpin, George Remus created one of the most in intricate, successful bootlegging operations of prohibition. George Remus bourbon captures the rebellious spirit of that era with a hint of vanilla, a maple aroma, and a sweet yet character char characteristic rye flavor, perfect for the speakeasy or liquor cabinet. Which is about right. So it is the high rye mash bill. You do taste that little little rye in there. Um, it is at least four years old, so we know that. That's another reason I picked this bottle because I thought that yeah, being the four year yeah. as opposed to there was another one I was looking at that was. It's got good color on it. Yeah, there was another one, like old granddad when we were looking at the one hundred proof. I, I looked at that was four year yeah. at least what it said on there. But then there's another one I was looking at and I can't recall which one it was. But there's a couple of new ones showing up in Ohio that I noticed that we're all like two year again. And I'm just yeah. like, we've been, we've been trying those and we've had some that were gonna be, there was a Tennessee one, there was a, uh, an Indiana one, I think, or something like that. And you're just like, or there's a, a, there's a Breckenridge now. Has yeah. a, it has one out in, yeah. in Ohio being distributed that I've seen for the first time in a while. And um, 
They're all the rest of Sherry Cask is really good. Is it? The Breckenridge. But again, yeah, all right. So <laughs> I'm just like, I was trying to find something that was going to be four year, was going to be, you know, aged properly, it had some history, it had the bootleg, and I thought that's good. Yeah, well, you're exactly right. And the vanilla thing got me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it does, definitely has that brown sugar, the characteristics of vanilla on the nose, maybe a little bit of honey. It has a massive sweetness. It's smooth. Too. Yeah. You guys, it's like small. you guys didn't let me use ice, so. It's not that we didn't let you. You can have some you now can if use, you want to get some. Yeah. So we're all drinking it like, what do you call it? Straight. Straight. Yeah. Neat. I think we need the neat neat straight for yeah. 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 What do you think of it, John? It's like, it's really, really good. Any, any characteristics about it that you, pops out? It's definitely very smooth. Yeah. Because again, like you said, we're drinking neat. And it is 94 proof. Which I like that. I like that area. Mm -hmm. I like that area. Ninety-five ish yeah. is, is is a sweet spot. Yeah, it's still a good area. Don't for me. For me. Don't let me kind of I'll get after it. Get uh, snobby about it, folks. Like I I do like ninety ninety proof. I just and I think you brought to my house a hundred and ten or something. <laughs> so I probably definitely have. <laughs> it might have been well. It was one forty. Wait, what was it? I don't think it was that hot. Oh, you're talking about the moonshine. Oh yeah. It wasn't yeah. Perfect, sorry. yeah, that was 160 proof shine. Uber's all around us. <laughs> Uber's they didn't good sponsored, by the way. I want to mention that. Sponsored by Uber. Dude, I've, I've tried to work with Uber as a sponsor for uh, Safe Ride. Every uh, time Central the guests get, get in, you feel yeah. get in it a little nah, bit. Not to dog Uber. If you guys want to use Uber, great. They're, they're tough to deal with from a business standpoint. I've tried to do it with another business, and it's, it's <laughs> not easy. Lyft is easy. I will say I started using Lyft lately. And so far, I've only used it a few times, like really? getting back from Josh's place. <laughs> I've got a five-star rating on like three rides. So all of a sudden, I got like 25% off rides stand this month if I ever want to take it. Nice. Love that. Okay. I don't know who does that, but okay. I, did I get, haven't pissed off one of the three Lyft drivers yeah. yet, so that's good. When I was in Florida, I did get like 10% off like all my rides. Nice. Know? So I don't know how that happened, but it worked. I've go. got that before too, uh, out of town on my Lyft. Yeah. yeah. Nice. 10% off. Nice. I'm downloading the app. There you go. See? L-Y-F-T. What, what if you, get, you guys want sponsored. What are you getting out of, out of this, dude? Well, Aaron, first. Aaron Guess first. Guess first. So I right? taste the rock. Sure. Sure. Uh, really? Do you taste the rock? I do, slightly. And it also tastes like, like, it's like a, it tastes like a little brown sugar with a... That's where the rye is coming out. Okay. The brown sugar, the spice, so, the, the more, yeah. the more food flavors is where the rye is going to really bring out the flavors of the corn and the rye. I get that little bit of spice as I've had a couple sips as well. Yeah. yeah. That's it? Yeah. That's all I got? You like it? Yeah, I like it. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Okay. Wait, wait, it's pretty nice. Good. I mean, there's hardly any burn at all. That's the thing I need about smoothness. I think the only thing I get is like after about 10 seconds. It's on your palate? No, not at all on the palate. Yeah. But like it's barely in the, if you really take a good whoosh around your mouth. Look at that thing. No. They fly. <laughs> Wants to talk. Yeah, exactly. Um, so this the burn exactly. isn't like a typical like in the back of the throat for me. Not at all. You know, like it's not like a burn like hot. It's actually a spice, not burn. It's like a spice. That's what I'm getting. Like kind of like uh, on the edges, the sides of my tongue, and, and towards the back of my mouth is where yeah, I'm getting right. that. You don't get a chest burn at all with this. No. Uh huh. No. There's a the interesting thing about their high rye mash bill is one of their what? <laughs> no, uh, Dustin says so is that a. Uh, Kentucky pat on the back then versus the Kentucky hug. Yes, <laughs> you're exactly right. Um, so you. with their high rye mash bill, that's going to be their most famous one. That's where you know these older barrels, the 12 years, 14s, and higher that these distilleries yeah. um, like Boone County, OKI, New Riff um, are buying these barrels. It's the same mash bill, just this is only you know around four years instead of 12. So. Yeah. Um, and the complexity of something like this is amazing. I, the cool thing about their high rye mash bill is the fact that it, even though it's a high rye mash bill, it, it's still over 70% corn. So it's a lot yeah. of corn and the rest is mostly rye and then there's like 3% malted barley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So I think with along with that corn and that rye sticking out, it's always like a, a go-to for them. But I'm, I'm really, really impressed for being around that four year mark yeah. of how well it tastes and how yeah. smooth it is, the creaminess, the richness. I mean, this is, uh, would be a nightcap for most people, I think. Yeah. So this is called straight bourbon whiskey, and it's so, the Kentucky has been removed from that saying, right? Exactly. And what, because so it's, it's, a, where? It, it's a leap, so. It's a good review, actually, it's a great review. Yeah. yeah. No, good question, Josh. So the reason why it's straight bourbon whiskey is because it's older than two years old. So they can do that, and they don't have to put an H statement on it. 
they couldn't call it straight bourbon whiskey if it was under two years, or they would have to put an age statement on it. Yeah. Um, and the fact that it's not made in Kentucky, it's made in Indiana, um, coming out of Midwest grain products, um, it's that, that's kind of explains that, if that makes sense. Indiana makes better corn, too, so. <laughs> you think? I don't know. <laughs> you know. good corn, right? I mean, it's got a lot of corn. They must be doing yeah, something right up there, I don't know. But they're, uh, they're killing it. Yeah. MGP, I mean, it's, we, we were having bottles almost, it felt like, weekly or every other week that were going to be MGP yeah. sourced products, no matter where they were coming yeah. out of, you know, so uh, this is... It's a smart business model by them, because, I mean, if you think about it, they go from selling all this stuff, why don't they cut out basically the, the middleman, if you will, and, right. and just get their own stuff out there and label it the way that they want to label it. Absolutely. And I like that, the, I, like, I do like the way that they went about adding, you know, George Renos as their kind of head of the product itself, even though that it had nothing to do with Indiana. <laughs> so. Right, right. That's interesting. <laughs> It'd be I, like Elijah Craig coming out of Maker's like more Mark. Or less they they right. carry a story along, more or less, and yeah. then it's when he distilled it. Yeah, and there's some really, really amazing... But he didn't live in Indiana. No. No, Newport, Cincinnati. Yeah, but it's close. It's all in that tribe. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. They did a good job. I like it a lot. I, I enjoy this quite a bit. In fact, I might pull another bottle down and save a little <laughs> bit of this for myself. How uh, how much was it? Uh, it's forty two. I think it was on the Ohio shelves. Forty two and some change. Um, so nothing crazy. I mean, that, I, I feel like a lot of times with anything. You have your thirty dollar, you know, you have yeah. a twenty dollar bracket, then you have thirty. But the thirty dollar bracket is disappearing, I think. Yeah. In my opinion, at least in Ohio, as far as prices, it's. I think it's gone for new whiskeys. Uh yeah, I mean even like the ones that are the two year that are like Ohio, or like the smaller operations. Yeah. Like, and I get that. I mean, like it's it's very consistent with a lot of things. When there's more overhead, you don't have the volume. You're not getting. You're not ordering volume. You're sourcing it out. So it's going to be the cost is higher. It's going to translate to the consumers. You're also starting businesses. Certain people uh, in any industry, I think, they, they try to kind of create larger margins at first yeah. to try to cover any investors, cover any loans that they have. And so I, I think you see some of that stuff. You know, So if you're buying all this new equipment, you're doing all this stuff, you, know, you get your facility, you do all that, and it's not just you're independently wealthy, which most people aren't, and they're doing all this stuff, so then all of a sudden it's like, well, yeah, we can make, you know, Five dollars here. Well, wouldn't it be great if we could make ten dollars instead of five? It's like, yeah, let's try it. Yeah. How do I feel? Netflix all did that. Yeah, Netflix is arrived like that. Wouldn't like it be cool? Stock went. <laughs> and we've both been a part of those situations oh, yes. where. I like. Well, <laughs> yeah, it would be cool. <laughs> I've been a part of that in business, and it's a very frustrating thing to be a part of. It's like, yeah, it would be cool to be able to do all that stuff. It's not feasible at the moment, so that's where the steady growth comes in. Um, so with this one, I think it, you know, you got four years on it. It's, it's more or less justified given the market. I think that's a fair market value for a bottle like this is about that $40 mark. As much as I would like to see personally, it'd be at $30 like yeah. bourbons and a lot of whiskeys used to be. If this was at eight and still their product and $40, like it would be flying off the shelves. I don't, yeah, and I, I think part of the reason this is not flying off the shelves is because it's at least that I've seen fairly rel readily available. Yeah. So it's not a, a uh, um, I'm just going to say, it's not like a nerd nerd whiskey. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not a whiskey yeah. geek, you know, it's like cigars and whiskey <laughs> like any other industry. Yeah. Again, it's like, yeah, this is like a, and it's not an insult, this is just simply a, it's not one that you can flip on the secondary market that I know of, so that's why it's not being grabbed right now but if you yeah. want to drink something for once hopefully that's this is one that i would grab for that 40 dollars price range the higher end dustin can we get this at kroger that's where i go the kroger that's where i, I got one yeah i've never really i haven't seen it or i just maybe haven't thought about it but now I, i'm now I'm there are take them out the, now there are yeah, other, so that's the thing you try something like that. Really good. there's other high-end george remus bottles out there where yeah. there are different blends of their higher age stuff which are around that 60 80 sure. range sure and they are releasing um, a, uh, it comes in this like a made, it almost looks like a Macallan M bottle. Really? If you've ever seen one, yeah. it's just like, it, it looks like a crystal glass, like decanter. And okay. It's, it's going to be like, a, I think a 20 year old. How's the, George uh, Remus. how's the, the re I was looking, just because I'm looking right now, how's the redemption stuff? 
Have we, have, have, has anyone it's had okay. that? Yeah. I like the bottle, it's like a big flask. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like how, it's like a real big flask. I picked it up, I was gonna get it. Yeah. Um, but I thought that, you know, for the price, I thought this would be a better one since we haven't had it yet and I've heard yeah. good things about it. But yeah, and that's also that might be something that we grab. So the redemption. Redemption, yeah, I've heard, uh, I've heard good bourbon, reviews. redemption, rye. My dad had the rye once and it was good. good. I've heard good reviews about it. I haven't tried it yet. It tasted yeah. like rye. Like imagine this except like a little more rye taste. Yeah. Um, a little more spice, a little more cinnamon. Yeah, Eric Evans asking, what would you closely compare it to? Jake, what do you think? Um, what would I closely compare this to? Um, give me one second. I would say, I would closely compare this with Old Forester's 1920 with a little bit of water. Interesting. Yeah. Because that 1920 was... Hot. It was hot by itself, but mm -hmm. if you like proof it down a little bit, because wow. it's about 110. Yeah. Um, and I know we haven't had the 1910 on it, but Eric, if you can find the old Forester 1910 and add a little bit of water to it, that would be an even better representation of how like of what this would go for. But that's around a sixty dollar bottle, so the fact that this is tasting like something that is around a six year eight. Um, yeah. I, I you know I think it's great. I, I can't really think of what other ones I could put it up towards like a Maker's Mark single barrel pick <clears throat> a little bit without the spice characteristics. Yeah, I mean, it does, that's actually it's interesting. I don't, I don't see it. I, I wouldn't compare it necessarily based on that, that episode we had with Dino Chapotis here in the garage when we had that 1920. I, I it does when you say that it's like a uh, when you add a little water. Yeah. It kind of does like I was taking a sip as you said that, and that's actually what I was thinking is it kind of feels like I've already added a, a dash of water to it. Right. But that's not a bad thing. Like, no, that's it's gonna not. be that's the that's the nice part about it is that it's, it's very drinkable. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where like what, what was the one I brought that night um, with Dino it was uh, the, the 1897 1897 bottle bottle. It, it's more that that kind of level of drinkable for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now Dustin has a a, a bone snapper, right? The hell is that? Backbone. Backbone. So the bone Backbone. snapper is a rye, and that's okay. another MGP product. But that's around that six year mark, eight year mark. Have we done backbone yeah. on this? No, we haven't. Uh, yeah. I yeah. We did. Yeah. Uh, Wait, no. Bobby. Brayer brought it, and go. I have the same pick. It yeah. hasn't been opened yet, yeah. but it's hot. But it's around 130 proof. So if you really proof that down, I bet it tastes a lot like 138 like something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's hot. hot. It's hot. It's great, but it's hot. Lee Marshall, we are drinking uh, the Remus, yes. Very nice. He's just tuning in. Very so. nice. <laughs> I yeah. compared it to Blade and Bow. Jack, That's a good representation. Blade and Bow. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's you, MGP you've, tried, you've tried it. It's yeah. mellower. Yeah, that's yeah, that's actually better. Yeah, Blade and Bow. Eric, that would be a better representation. Okay. Regular. Yeah, regular, regular one. So, nice. What, nice. Do you think this goes good with the cigar that we're smoking? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's a lot softer. I'm taking uh, one more sip, and then I'm done with it. Fine. I just, let's get another bottle. Like, I, got, I have two other bottles. I know there's other bottles in, in the garage here. I um, brought a bottle, by the way. Uh, where is dry. it? It's the one that Aaron brought over that we've never had. What for reserve? It's the uh, proprietary blend. Oh, yeah. What? Did you try that before? What is it? We're probably doing it. Where is it? I don't have it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Where is it? Well, I was going to save it for later, but uh, I can go get it. No. 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 Empty. It works. Well, I mean, empty. I was going to save it for you. I just thought it's got a different. It's really different. I didn't it's know how it was allowed to be like a double. Yeah. Does it come in a small bottle? Or no, it comes in a regular bottle. Okay. It's well, called well. proprietary. Proprietary. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's is it a white label? Blue. blue. I'll let Dustin get it. Dustin, it's in the It's blue. Do not. It's not the white Please don't try it. No, it's interesting. So, uh, Paul, oh well, on the cigar. Uh, yeah, the cigar. So well, yeah. To to match it, I think it, what I was to answer that, I think that it is uh, so the a bit seat behind softer. In the, it's in the, uh, the plastic whiskey. bag. <laughs> <laughs> Under all of the. He's not even in the garage. I feel like you're just interrupting, interrupting. No. I'm about to be quiet, like episode. No. <laughs> don't don't do that. Stay out of it. Stay after it. Don't um, do that. <laughs> what I was gonna say is, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that the Padron Maduro, um, I, I want to say it, it's, it, it pairs all right, but it's like, it's a, it's got a little drier finish. And so it's not, 
the, the whiskey pairs well, and this is going to sound super like weird, but the whiskey pairs well with it, but the cigar doesn't pair well with the whiskey. Like, it's kind of like, it's, I'm enjoying, maybe that's part of the pairing, is that I enjoy taking a sip of this. And then smoking. But then smoking this, it's actually the opposite. I would rather take a smoke of the Padron and then go to the whiskey because it kind of yeah. softens and like yeah. kind of like has that little bit of coating. It's got that. It's like refreshing and everything like you know that. What, for that, me, that makes sense. I mean, I don't know if you guys are following. Me there. What's the too? Would that so? Would that be that the cigar complements the whiskey more than the whiskey complements the cigar? With this, flip that. Scratch oh. that reverse. It. Okay. I got you. That's that's what I would think. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. The me. whiskey compliments the cigar. The cigar does not compliment the whiskey as much. I feel like when I said, because I said that last week, um, <laughs> I forget what it was about, especially with the whiskey and the cigar, but the Perdomo, that's what I thought. The cigar complimented the whiskey. I think that cigar complimented, would compliment a lot of whiskeys as well. well yeah. That conversation went. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. But I think a lot of people don't know what that is means really because it is kind of weird to say but it, yeah, absolutely. it makes so, sense for those that have experienced it you were going to say something yeah i would say like you know it's not as peppery like this drink right so i you know i think a peppery cigar would complement it as well i can right? see because, that you know the pepperiness there and then the balance with the more milder yeah, yeah. Mm, absolutely yeah it's awesome on that bottle yeah very nice so Aaron bought this over for me. So that's actually Aaron's yeah, choice. I I'm not sure. That's green. I'm sorry. Where he no, it's blue. blue. It's from malt. Is it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's like the straight malt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did we do that one? Yes. Nate okay. brought it on. Yeah. Yeah. Nate yeah. did. And it is good. Yeah. Good. yeah. I was actually really surprised. Yeah. Well. It is fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Let's put it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine where it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I want to say Jonathan Herring tuned in. I don't know if he's still on, but Jonathan Herring, thank you. He was. I just reposted that, or we just reposted that um, of the Ricky Rodriguez episode that we had with Jonathan Herring from General Cigars. Sessions. Well, we smoked the sessions back in April, and that, for whatever reason, I think that was part of the the Facebook uh, algorithms and whatever yeah. that the the shows weren't getting as much attention, even with sharing them. But I, I reshared that episode because of the CAO sessions that we were smoking that night had been released and all of a sudden like overnight it was like another over a thousand views on that you know yeah. so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't hashtag I didn't hashtag it so um, and then we also have uh, welcome on and so again this is a good reminder uh, welcome to Michael uh, he says hello my brother's watching from Sydney Australia so uh, Michael awesome. is welcome yeah. we are worldwide which is fantastic uh, we're hello, keep expanding Damn, <laughs> that's terrible. Um, Whenever you say worldwide, I always think of Step Brothers. Prestige World, worldwide. Yeah, worldwide. Yeah, worldwide. Wide, wide. Yeah, wide, wide. I, I, <laughs> I see you myself seconds. as one of those guys, you know? <laughs> I, I was, Australia? That's my. Well, no. Step Brothers. Yeah. Guy with a <laughs> Canadian tuxedo and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I am third member. Michael says, in your, for you, uh, Josh, good day, mate. And he's got a bunch of crying faces. <laughs> I, don't know, I think that's because he's laughing so hard he's crying. He might just be like, you hurt my feelings. I don't he's know laughing what at you. <laughs> he's laughing. He's laughing. <laughs> um, but that's a good point. Um, Josh is hanging out with Tyler. I think Ricky's actually there. They were at some event either last night or tonight. Mm -hmm. Tyler Jones is, is with, with Jonathan right now. So this is a good reminder. If you guys are listening to the audio, the YouTube, go back on Facebook, see the video. This is something we do every Wednesday night. And this is something where you can contribute to the conversation. You can uh, enjoy, cigar. enjoy a cigar with us. You know, if you guys are just hanging out, it's on Facebook live every yeah. Wednesday night. So I do that all the time. And then the, the thing is, the cool thing about it, I don't know if, if Michael's part of one of the cigar groups or bourbon groups that we share too, um, but if you have someone that would enjoy the show, please share it any way you can. Tell someone about it, but also share it, you know, while you're listening. Yeah. And see if they want to contribute to this conversation and be like, what, what are these guys talking about in the garage? So. And happy belated birthday, Jonathan Herring. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cheers. Sorry I couldn't meet up with you for a drink. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, with the Padron, um, what do you guys think of the Padron? Have you, has everyone in the garage had a, a Padron series? It's just a Padron, I call it core series when I'm working on the, the retail side. Yeah. I always get this when I'm out of town. Sure. Like, and cigar shop might have a limited selection and I don't really like necessarily uh, know what they like so I don't know is it like a general cigar that like it's just a 
Classic Padron. Classic Padron. Like their yeah. core. This is what you see. Their I, core and line. I just feel like that's the one I, I go for. It's like your everyday line. Yeah, it's not like your anniversary yeah. or anything special. Like it's price wise, you know the road. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's a little below average. I would put, yeah, right, I would yeah, put I, average I, at around $10 yeah. anymore. And if, like this is like what, $7, $8.95? This, so the 3000 in Ohio, at least on our shelf uh, at the thinner box at Easton, Columbus, Ohio, it is seven ninety five. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I don't know what the, the suggested retail is, probably around 7 bucks. I don't know. I, I, I saw them for the same price when I was down in Florida just yesterday. Interesting. So, and, and they have a huge Padron selection. But what's, what's the story on Jose, right? Jose uh, is the patriarch. Born in 1926, if you guys are familiar with the, the Padron cigars, you have a yeah. 1926 series. It's not yeah. called the anniversary series, it's just the 1926. That's yeah. uh, and that's to, to basically pay tribute to him being born. Before that though, the origin, which is Jose's grandfather, uh, is Damaso Padron, which they released a cigar not too long ago that was actually a bit lighter in shade. It was a Connecticut shade. Uh, nice cigar, milder a little bit than what they're used to. Um, but that was his uh, grandfather and he actually had immigrated to Cuba from the Canary Islands, and that's where this all started. He, so he started in the tobacco fields back then, started his own farm in the uh, Pino del Rio region, which we talked about yeah. before. Um, I you spent a day out there. You know one thing I never noticed on the band itself? I didn't know it had Cuba on the band. Uh, I don't think that's Cuba. It, really? Is that DR? Uh, actually, that's Nicaragua. Oh, okay. Um, maybe. Maybe. I had to look at it. I thought it looked like Cuba. <laughs> Who knows? Um, I think Cuba's longer and skinnier. <laughs> but uh, so, anyways, yeah. So, um, yeah. Jose grew up, you know, in, in that area in Cuba, and then uh, he, he ended up in Miami after what we talked about on previous episodes with a couple other families, yeah. where they had to leave when the Castro administration basically kind of nationalized everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they 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 fled. Uh, so he went to Spain, then to New York, and then he went to Miami, and that's where they're kind of based their camp out of initially, and then he started using Nicaraguan tobacco, but before that it was actually Connecticut Broadleaf, which is interesting. Yeah. They Connecticut Broadleaf got to, uh, and this is, you know, based off of some research I've done on the internet, um, because, you know, you hear different stories, but I figured, you know, some readily available information would be good for people. Um, that, that That's where the story is, if you guys have had any of the uh, anniversary or some of the special ones, where yeah. you see the Little Hammer series. Oh, yeah. yeah, That's based on the fact that when he was there, he started as a carpenter. A friend gave him a small hammer. Have you heard this story? Not mine. Gave him a small hammer, and uh, that he raised, according to this, the, the legend has it, is that he, he raised $600 to start his own cigar business. And then uh, that was about 200 cigars a day. He was using the Connecticut Broadleaf. Then he was starting to use Nicaragua tobacco. But then uh, they... they he was getting too popular, so it made sense to actually relocate to Esteli, Nicaragua, mm. and start to set up camp there. And that was actually uh, as recent as 1970. Wow. Um, and then you had the political problems in Nicaragua. It's always these, you know, they pick these third world countries, you know, yeah. where all this is able to be grown and everything. So mm. you have government issues. Um, and then when the Reagan uh, administration was in, there was a uh, uh, embargo for a short period of time or several uh, yeah. years there. And so he moved back to the camp area. That's where you hear like uh, the Padrones have a yeah. a store and small little factory in uh, Ybor City, mm -hmm. in that area I believe, in the, the Miami area. Um, uh, and, and so that then they've expanded since then. Obviously, yeah. went back to Nicaragua. Yada yada yada. This is part of the Padrone series, which is just their core line. They have a National Maduro, not only in this series but in 1964. They have it in the the uh, which is the anniversary series. They have it at the the uh, 1926 series, basically most of it is just that it's all sun-grown Nicaraguan tobacco, yeah. and, and that's what they're known for. And from the retail standpoint, they don't have any reps. We don't, we don't really have a traveling rep like a lot of the companies. Yeah. You basically place an order through their office. They claim that they sell every cigar that they make, uh, which is phenomenal, which I believe. Yeah. When we're ordering, we want to get some 1964 uh, anniversary, or we want to get some 1926. What we'll do is we have to basically place a large order to get, and then say like we want the 3,000, we want the 4,000, the yeah. and so on. You order enough, and you say we also want to order these 1964s, these 1926s, these number 40s, 45s, 50 year, 80, 85, 90, yeah. all that stuff. And based on your overall orders is how you get all of that stuff. 
So normally we'll have to let our, our, our uh, stock go down to a certain level yeah. from a business standpoint and then place a very dramatically large order based on, as opposed to just being like, hey, we need uh, four boxes of 1964 Imperials. It's not typically how we do business with them. It's the opposite. So yeah. it's interesting. It's interesting. They've been around for obviously a long, long time. They should hook up with Amazon or something. They could ship them to them. Not cheap to me. No, but uh, I've, I've never had a problem with the drone. I've always had great draws out of those cigars. Absolutely. Uh, Consistency has always been there. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the 1964. Yeah. So, 1964 anniversary yeah, series? Yeah. Can't go wrong with that at all. Yeah. I I like the core series as it is. I like them the, the core series. Is, this this is great. I like I them. I haven't had a core in a while. Yeah, and I'm, there's I've never had a bad core. Yeah, and there's a rumor. I don't know if you believe it, Steve, but if there's a rumor, if you take like the naturals, like just like a three thousand or like five thousand, and age them for like two to three years in your humidor, that it, it tastes and smokes like a anniversary, like a sixty four. You know, I've never tried that. I, you know, it might. I, I don't yeah, know. Ron, right. Ron gave me two uh, three thousands, I believe, yeah. last year. At yeah. the age for like three years. Yeah. And I haven't had a sixty four in a long time, but it was pretty damn close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it was really freaking good. So the aging nice. at the back made the difference. Yeah, but I mean, this is good too. I, yeah. yeah. You know, a weird note. I don't get like a lot of notes out of cigars, but like with the whiskey and the cigar. And retro handling now that I can. <laughs> Which we're oh, still yeah. proud of. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone. You can stop applauding. I appreciate it. I haven't seen it yet. Can I see it now? I don't know. I think I it's, it's not like Steve's. It's uh, very uh, short, but subtle. Let's call it subtle. There you go. Very controlled. You have sleep apnea? <laughs> no, I'm well, going but, to. Um, yeah, but you know, <laughs> there's there with the whiskey and the cigar after I retro hail. It's, there's a lot of like weird flavors that I, not weird, but flavors that I get from when I, when you eat like a steak, like a lot of spices, a lot of, food, yeah, that. like, like grilled spices is okay. what I get out of the retro ale. Like when I take a sip of whiskey, have a puff of the cigar and then retro ale it, I get a lot of, you know, like cayenne pepper, like the, the, the grilled meat, like grilled fillets or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why, but that's what I got out of it. I think it goes well with that kind of a meal, especially the oh, yeah. Dude, I, this was like one of my first, like I call it my starter cigar. Yeah. And that's not to, to say that it's going to be, what's up Sam Lucia who's tuning in, check oh, cool. his stuff out, uh, Stogie Bird, right? Sam, so if you're, if you're still on Sam, I believe it's Stogie Bird, if you want to give a shout out to anyone that's going to be following the feed, it's a great new product that he's doing, it's like a mail order thing. Oh yeah? Absolutely. Hmm. Interesting. Sam, if you want to send us something at some point so we can review that product line, that'd be great, but no. I haven't seen But I haven't seen Sam in a while. He's always been fantastic in the industry. So thank you, Sam, for tuning in. Um, if you could, uh, uh, yeah, Stogieberg. He says, Club Stogieberg. Um, but yeah, this used to be like one of my, uh, I like that you post this in Club Stogieberg. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, this was like an everyday smoke for me uh, back in the day. And like I said, it doesn't speak to the level of like quality. Yeah. It was just something that, to your guys' point earlier, this is like a, a you know you can grab a Padron, no matter if it's part of the Padron series, the core, like yeah, what we're calling the core series, yeah. 1964, 1926, any of the special years, you are rarely going to have any consistency issues in my, my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll forgive it that it's a soft box press. <laughs> You'll forget it? Yeah, yeah. It, for the fact that it's really good. <laughs> Absolutely. Josh, what do you think of the cigar? I love it. It's really good. Cool, thank you. That's I mean, very think, to the point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I mean, I, I think uh, if it's bad, you know, that's one thing, but um, I enjoy bourbon and cigars, and so when I get the chance. It don't matter what it is. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if it's a good opportunity. <laughs> but you know what? This good is a better quality core cigar. I mean, you know. Four hundred ten bucks. I mean, it's, it's really a great cigar. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you said, consistency's there. It's got, it's got a really great aroma off it. It does. Like I, I don't know if it's it's like yeah, it doesn't get bitter. That's what I'm getting. Well, that's that's exactly what happened. Do you know what the filler in the binder is? All Nicaragua. It's all Nicaragua. That's all. I mean, it's really all I can find. I mean, it's all I've been told is that it's going to be. It's it's an it's an all Nicaraguan cigar. 
it's stuff that they typically grow. Yeah. Um, and it's all sun grown. That's basically the information you get out of it. They're actually pretty, pretty proprietary. Yeah, they're pretty tight on all that stuff. I mean, there's you hear rumors, right? I mean, like I've heard rumors that the, the you know some of the, the anniversary series, like the Maduro, the the Maduro is actually yeah. not Nicaraguan. <laughs> Some people like kind of have a theory that it's actually going to be a San Andreas. They were using San Andreas tobacco, or at least tobacco seed, yeah, yeah. way back. But they're growing it maybe in Nicaragua, so it has a little bit different flavor. Um, it, it, you hear you hear different things, but with this, as far as I know, it's all Nicaraguan tobacco. It's very consistent. Yeah. It's interesting because the natural Maduro. When you're talking about that, there there are differences in the two blends, no matter what you're smoking. Slight, but they're slight. Exactly. It's it's more of a subtle thing. You know, it's going to be something where. You don't uh, like. You can open up based on color sorting, even. Yeah. yeah. If you happen to open up a natural box and a, and, a, and a Maduro box, and I just take one cigar out of each, and in good lighting, if you have some of the lighter Maduro shade ones and darker natural, if I do the shell game with you and say, hey, which one of these three is the natural? Thank God the boxes are labeled. Oh, you have to. <laughs> yeah. Because there are times where you know, like we have them in bins at our store, and so when you like you reach in there, you look it up, and you're like holding up to the light, you're like. Sure, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, okay. have you smoked a natural? I, no, I don't think I have. I, I, would, I would like to. This has a richer creaminess, yeah. velvetiness oh, yeah. to it than yeah. the natural does. Natural is like more, obviously, more cedary, lighter, wouldn't you say, Steve? I would say cedary. Yeah, it's I mean, a it's little, the same. but again, like you said, it's subtle. Yeah, it's still like medium body. I'd say this has a, a richer, like, a, a, and, and again, this is not a negative term, it almost has a not a bitter, but like a drier finish, I feel yeah, like, than the natural. I can get that. This has more of a, a bold, um, bold finish, bold, bolder, I hate that term, like that mouthfeel, like whatever, I fucking hate that <laughs> term, but it's gonna have that kind of yes, bolder, bolder, just overall uh, uh, experience. Yeah. I, I, I really like this pairing. I do too. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? With this, no, I mean, I think it's... Before the, moving on? Moving on, what are you pouring there? I'm going to pour the Weller Antique that Dustin got me, and I appreciate that, Dustin, for getting it. Got Steve one, too, so probably the last ones that we'll see for a little bit. Yeah, Special Reserve is out there. Yeah. Absolutely out there. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think that there's a lot of rumors going about that for some reason, like, this stuff's, like, leaving the shelves, but I was told by, like, the head man himself... <laughs> Of like liquor control, Jim, yeah, Canepa, like just last fall that we had like a four year contract. So I don't know if Scott GK is on, he would know the answer. He was yeah. on earlier. He just has he just had a really great interview with him with Ohio Bourbon Times. So nice, yeah, very nice, interesting. All right, saving. Yep. So at this time, we're doing our quick intermission while we save the podcast. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, we extend the urge to share this and like this and please continue watching as we get into the subject. Hi, we're off here? And yeah, I at the moment, what do you need? Cool, I, got, I just got to the bathroom. I hate the bathroom oh, too. Geez. You guys gonna go together? I tried no. to drink a lot of water before I came. Well, you guys can show the hall and then there's, uh, you know where the bathroom is downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. No, you go downstairs, you go upstairs. We're gonna kind of let's expedite this. Go ahead, get smoke in the house. Quick Q&A yeah. by yeah. our live Absolutely. viewership. Absolutely. And this is an exclusive for you since we aren't on our audio. <laughs> Absolutely, Corey Gregory is watching with us. Uh, I don't know if he's still that. on, so Corey, yeah. welcome. Uh, check out their podcast if you guys are, are listening to this on the YouTube or on the Facebook, Business and Biceps, great podcast. They are nationally, internationally known, but uh, yeah. they've got some great stuff, great content. Him and John Fosco, I haven't seen Maurice on there much lately, so I don't know uh, what's going on with that, but uh, maybe, maybe I'm missing those episodes again. I. I try to follow them and I listen when I can, so I appreciate yeah. that, Corey. You guys have some great content as well. Which, if this job goes through, we're gonna, I'm going to have to ask Corey how they do things, because <laughs> they do it separately as well. When John's down south. Yeah, and, it'll be interesting. That'll be in, interesting to see. Corey's in Ohio, so. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, PC Whiskey, Carson Deck, uh, welcome. Oh, what's up, Carson? Good to see you. I want to say, uh, so also, with, with that being, being said, with, you know, possibly Jake... Uh, relocating, we'll see what happens, and we're not, you know, we're going to be happy no matter where you land. Obviously, we can stay here, great. If you, uh, <laughs> if you, if you relocate, great. Um, but uh, I do want to thank. It was last week's guest, Spencer. Yeah. Uh, he has uh, donated some funds, so uh, that's going to go towards 
some of our new audio and, and, and AV equipment. So mm -hmm. uh, we're working on getting a package. So going forward, uh, hopefully, for those of you that are listening on the uh, the video, especially where we get a lot of the traffic, you're gonna you're gonna hear some audio upgrades if all goes well in the upcoming weeks. So uh, Spencer Lappin with the you know, might as well say his company is the Lappin Group as well. But well, and it'll be cool with it'll be a cool different setup with all everyone's individual mics. As Absolutely. Well. So, so yeah, time to upgrade. We're getting to that point. We're going to be uh, getting some uh, new sponsors going forward, and and in the interim, it was great to get that support from one of our reoccurring guests and also uh, a good friend of ours. So, uh, t stay tuned for that part. Might have to go off of. Uh, a Dino Tripodis and whiskey business handbook and get a poker table. <laughs> Cause yeah. That was cool. <laughs> Very cool. Um, all right, let's, let's, just like I'm telling Liz with the house, one thing at a time. All right, we gotta pace this stuff out. I'm, right, not, I'm not buying. Right. I'm not going into credit card debt to finance this uh, podcast. So hopefully we'll get that. Uh, I'll, good be, sponsor. I'll be there soon. So it's not are. just you. you it's not just you. I'll be there soon. Absolutely. <laughs> As Liz just tunes in right now, so of course she's probably gonna hear that part. But I said, hey, I got to tell Liz. I hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> it, or are you good, guys? No, it yeah. wasn't because it got weird. Because he actually did not pay attention. He no, he said, Josh got upstairs. upstairs bathroom, so we went oh, to the wrong place. Same one. We met at the right I told place. you to go downstairs. I told you. I told you, man. I got the bathroom. I already knew. Why would I go down there? You saw both of them. Do we have any more sharks? Carson asked if we have any. <laughs> I told you. Are there any eyes? No, you're Carson, right? I have no, no, no eyes so, sharks right now. Not with us. Not with us, yeah, and, and that's going to be tough to find, I think, at this point. Yeah, very uh, rare cigar there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's get, uh, let's get rolling here. Yeah. You guys all good? We, we had a little bit of a bathroom break here. Yeah. On the, uh, Not you and me. Here, so. No, we're, we're holding it. Now watch, we both have to go now. <laughs> uh, and then we'll leave it up to these two guys to run the podcast. We're doing it pretty good. I was in yeah, a there where I just happened to Yeah, go. We're, we're just sweating it out now. That's the issue. Why yeah, but that's back when we were doing three hours instead of two hours. Good point. point. So yeah, two hours. Three. I can wait for Feel two hours. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Uh, so topic. What is well, the topic? Why we were in there? Before, just calm down. Um, <laughs> the reason that we have Aaron on and, and, and and Josh, Josh on, is because <laughs> I'm very at, curious by the way that's why because after the podcast they kind of did a uh, informal not only Try. say hello but it's almost like a challenge they call it a trial it's only a challenge that they wanted to they, they called theirs I think the BS Bourbon podcast and they were basically <laughs> that's your top day they, they were basically uh, drunk in Josh's shed which that sounds really weird for those of you that have not seen the shed because it's just they're hanging out in the shed drinking drunk together <laughs> but it's a, a he shed. That doesn't make it any better based on what you're doing in a he shed. But <laughs> large sausage fest, right? What oh, it is? Okay. So he's got a studio. And one of the things, one of the things Josh does. Many times. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. Uh, and, you go, and you've overstayed your welcome, by the way. You broke tree branches. You rode on my daughter's zip line at four in the morning. Wow. I mean. You gotta keep the fire going. Or something. Josh. I mean. So, so my point was is that Josh and Aaron were hanging out. Josh has a shed that's uh, full of audio and video equipment. That's what he does for a living. Lovely home in uh, Galena, yeah. Galena, Ohio. Uh, he hosted a, a New Year's Eve party that all of us were at actually. So that's uh, you know this is part of the community that we have. Great party. We want to extend. It was a great party. We want to extend it to you guys. And then Aaron was there as well, and they were basically video chatting with us, and then they posted on our our uh, Facebook page, and so it just made sense after that challenge, as I saw it, is to invite them on to see if they want to have some podcast chops and uh, see how they do and if they want to. It's sweating here, bro, I can tell you that. I don't know. I'm is that why you're out? Is this how you get on your aunt? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and then, so we have Aaron, and he kind of, I don't know really if you alluded to it much, but what you do for a living. So, so I, I kind of, Josh, if you want to, uh, before, as we get into the topic, the yeah. consistency, it's a, the struggle of consistency. And when I was thinking of you two guys uh, as, as guests and what, what Jake's been, been working with and through recently, and what, you know, this is actually a struggle of mine, is the struggle of consistency in, in, in everything. And I'll get into my side of it as well. But as far as Josh, you know, tell him a little bit about yourself. I think you might have him way, way back, a year and a half ago, but uh, about what you do, about your, you know, just a little bit of background. Yeah, so I work in video uh, production, a lot of corporate commercial work. I worked on a few feature films, although I speak to both the camera. I and stepped the off of the feature film industry just because of uh, the lack of consistency, actually. Um, and so, sticking with my bread and butter, 
was it more of the corporate commercial work, uh, doing videos for you know interviewing CEOs and uh, product place type videos, etc. Um, that's more my bread and butter. Right. So yeah. I've done that for close to twenty noise. years. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. Just I know I only look twenty, but uh, you don't look twenty. Make it on camera. Yeah, yeah. we're good. Like, Damn. All right. And as you're Sorry. talking, as you're an AV guy, talk more to the camera and that'll pick you up. Well, to be honest with you, I've always said look at the announcer. Like right. they, we always told the guests to look at the announcer well, and talk. When they ignore the camera. So you now you're it's confusing me. Well, have you ever watched Sports Center? Um <laughs> it's <laughs> it's kinda awkward when the guy goes like this. No, so and he's so like, what we were talking about before the before we recorded, you got you came over and you helped me in the past with, with audio stuff. So when we were explaining that we've got new equipment kind of on the way, we're piecing it together. So hopefully we get to that point where if you're we'll talking to that. us, yeah, then all of a sudden they'll, the they'll, uh, they'll get that, that feed. But as it is now, we get a lot of the traction from uh, the Facebook. So the Facebook. the Facebook feed. Love it. Love it. So yeah, so welcome to being here. You have a family, lovely family. Mm -hmm. Two kids, two daughters. Two lovely daughters, lovely wife, beautiful home. Yeah. So you, you are making it work with being I, a, a small business owner, really. I mean, it was a struggle from the get-go, and uh, you know, trying out, uh, doing what I love um, is, is where it starts, I think, is, is doing where, what you're passionate about. And, and I think you find that passion, uh, you'll have the desire to get better, and, and basically become consistent because of that. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's good lead. Do you good think lead. that, let me ask this, do you, how long, like, did it take you to get your reins to be consistent? Well, After being in the Army or Air Force? I was in the Air Force. Air yeah, Force? that's okay. when I started getting into uh, going to college and learning AV production stuff. And uh, came back home uh, right after that, four years stint, um, and went right into it. I mean, I started before I got out, and then I came back home and was like, this is what I'm going to do. 22, 20, 20. I was about 22. 22 at that time? Okay. Yeah. And how, how old are you now? Uh, 41. 41. So you've been doing this for, for two decades, basically. <laughs> Half your life. No, I think it's great. I think it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, that's something that you got into, you know, at a young age. You've been able to create a family life. You've been able to create a business. You've been able to create all of this stuff. And I think that's going to be very pertinent to this, this conversation. And that's when businesses were around. I mean, nowadays, it's the freelancer, independent guy who's working from home because the digital technology has allowed all that where cameras were too much money. They were 20, 30 grand. Yeah. Uh, now they have this DSLR, like, you know, the still cameras, which are yep. DSLR. That's what I used. That's what I used. Exactly. And it was amazing. Everybody has that. Everybody has uh, it was. a laptop with Final Cut. It used to be Final Cut Pro. Now it's a Adobe Premiere. And so the animated systems and, and everything cost wise has gone down. And so what you hoped, but what did not stay consistent was the quality. But now that YouTube is there, that is creating like this standard where we're doing things like this podcast, for example, right? Yeah. Now we had lights, 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 backlighting, key light, fill light. Right. You know, we're just using rod lights and. Well, and it'll be interesting with the, the basic stuff that we're going to be getting over the upcoming weeks. You know, what I mean, as far as that goes, I mean, even doing what we're doing. Now, granted, the the, the video audio is not the greatest, and you know what we're doing on the podcast side is is not the top notch. But I, I listen to some of the. The very high end, if you will, podcast. The ones, they they, they sound home. like we do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. we talk about that one now, Jake and Dustin are listening to it, but you know, the, the, by that one, he's sitting on his gorgeous beach house, if you will, oh, yeah. on the patio, and I'm watching that. the YouTube. I'm like, where the hell are the microphones? And you listen to the audio, and you're like, I don't think they have microphones on. Like, no. This guy is literally just like sitting there having a conversation, yeah. and he's got millions of listeners, and you're just like, that's just okay now. Well, okay. Yeah. The consistency nowadays is just getting it out the content. Oh, yeah, yeah. Content, content, is content. Content. content is king. Content is king. It's, it's not about, about the, I mean, a lot of people still do the flashy editing with everything. Oh, yeah. There will always be a business for that, but like all these big guys that have already made names for themselves will always tell you just get it out there. It doesn't matter yeah. how, you know, how many pretty rainbows you put on it or how, you know, clean it is, just get it out there. If the message is pure, it's going to be rewarded with um, viewership. And I think that's what I like and about it's when about we were giving. It's about giving because so you're giving, giving content yeah. and you, in return you get viewers and you get people that want to learn and want to grow in that area. And actually, you know, like the thing was, was when we were on, uh, you know, uh, Whiskey Business with Dino Chipotas, it was that was Dino being on there with his years of radio oh, yeah. um, background. He's got a producer guy that's got years of radio background. He's got yeah. a video guy with two GoPro cameras. 
that can splice together with his eyes closed. So he's, he's able to have that, that content and have that kind of informal feeling, but then he has that level of polish on there that I, I hope that we can achieve. So then you have that, that mix. You have the content is, is king. That's, you can have your prettiest pig out there, but it's still a pig, you know what I mean? It's oh, yeah. still, there's not like, yeah, it sounds great on my stereo in my car, but like, there's nothing to be listened to. Yeah. But it just sounds nice. But what was interesting, I mean, what was that one interesting thing about the fact that they, I mean, they were still spontaneous. Very much Like, so. they, they yeah. had an idea, but they still switched it up when they got a different feeling throughout the podcast. And Absolutely. I think that that is always key. Like, Absolutely. They had a nice structure. They had everything. They, they had a structure, but it wasn't produced, scripted. Produced. It wasn't scripted. Well, yeah, much like we are. You know, yeah. you have a very basic framework. It's like bourbon whiskey topic, and then it's yeah. like, boom, you have that. You might have a few notes, might have a few thoughts in your heads, but it's not like this. There's no teleprompters. There's no scripts to the show. No. That's where the content comes not in. Whatsoever. Aaron, um, we. I got Josh. one text with Steve. You're talking about. Yeah. Consistency. <laughs> and then you're like, I prefer not to know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he's got these like big, uh, big chops for podcasting now. Oh, yeah. and, you know, after being drunk once. Uh, <laughs> Aaron, tell us a little bit about yourself. You guys, uh, it's interesting because you, you had the background in uh, really? finance yeah. originally, right? Yeah, credit finance. With, uh, with, yeah, with Chase. Chase and uh, Nationwide. And Nationwide. So two big companies. We had Logan on recently. Uh, I don't know if you listened to that podcast, which was a great one, Logan Manning. He, he basically, at a, at a younger age, basically walked out from a similar type of a job. I think a little earlier than you were, you had some experience in that, that yeah. field. But then when, when at a certain level, at a certain point, you're like, I need to do something more, something different with my life. And I remember Absolutely. having conversations with you. And now you have a, a real estate business. Yep. Not only do you sell houses, but you also are buying houses and Redevolve. fixing them up, yeah. uh, basically renovating. It's not like exactly. a flipping thing. It's not like your old school, no. like what, a decade ago, where it's like, oh, real estate market's hot, I'm just gonna take a piece of shit, throw the new cabinets, new carpet down, and then do yeah. this. No, like you're like, Gutting it, you're, yeah. you're doing the real deal oh, yeah. and giving people new homes, and at the same time making making a living off of it yeah. and sustaining also a lovely family. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I so I, so Steve mentioned I have a corporate background in finance and in credit as well. So I mean, I and I enjoyed everything I did then, but I just knew that there was something out there for me. There was just you know there was more, and uh, I've always had real estate in my mind since after high school and. Going into college, I was, you know, studying engineering and studying just so many different things. And it's just like, okay, let me just try this out. Let me do that. But kind of put real estate off to the side for, for many years. And uh, maybe about, like, when I was 22 years old, I just decided to buy my first property. How old? 22. 22, and you are, like we did with Josh, how old are you now? 31. 31. So you got a full, basically, decade. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, you you're, you're, you're at a level, like. Cash. Cash. Yeah. Wow, man. I bought my first house at 22. Then I, well, technically, then more, I'll, I'll, for then I, I, I'll, I'll be more technical. I'm 23 when, we, when I close on it. So. Now, is this a house for yourself? No. This was a house for the business side. For the business side, I think. So you didn't move in. corporate. Yeah. You didn't move into the house. No, I never this was moved purely in. a business move. I bought it. I, I actually fixed up 80% of the property myself. God damn. It's awesome work. It's amazing. I had no idea what to do. YouTube wasn't too big on how to fix things up myself, so I just had to figure it out. Use a lot of common sense. So you're back in 2009, 2010. Well, it's like actually 2012. All right. Being more exact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Candy, and when I was still graduating high school. Like, the economy was struggling at that time. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're out of the, like, just out of the boat. Just baby. Yeah. 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 I decided, let me get going. That's what that's what happened. I just decided to take take action on that. Wow. And so I did that for about three years, three and a half years, and then I took a break. I was, you know, working a lot more hours at work. I was at Nationwide at the time. Excellent company. Excellent. Yeah. And I was there, and I was working a lot of hours, and... Uh, I was actually a licensed agent as well, so I was selling houses part time, and like you know, one year I sold fourteen houses while I was working full time and remodeling houses. Wow! And it just became overwhelming. I just had a, you know there was things that were going on at the company I was at as well, and we uh, there was a merger acquisition with uh, the bank, and we uh, downsized and actually removed the bank from the company portfolio. So uh, yeah, it really became right. a, a bigger opportunity because I had other opportunities within the company to seek into, but I decided to branch off and go into the real estate avenue. And I was, uh, you know, I made a decision 2016, 2017, but I really took action in 2018. That's where I took more massive action. And that's when I did, we had a better year that year and acquired a lot more properties. We remodeled. Who's we? 
Well, I myself. Okay. I just you're say busy. my company. Yeah, my yeah, company. Okay. If I say my company. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I, want I just don't make. It, I don't make it individualized. Here. I just you know. I like that. because there's other people that do work in those pieces. There's other agents that ha I have that 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 assist in, in that process and contractors. So I, I see it as a team. At the end of the day, it's not me. You know, yeah. success is not due to me. It's not at all. So it's it's due to my team. Yeah. And so it's it's helped me uh, gradually and grow and increase as well. And I've gotten to a program as well that assisted with the business development side of it too. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. And so uh, from that point, yeah. And I have, I have a family. I have three boys, ten, five, and three. Uh, so <laughs> they keep me busy. They keep me active as yeah. well. I'd say so. And lovely um, wife as well. Yeah, lovely wife. And uh, been over the pool a few times. Yeah. At the apartment. Oh yeah. Nice time. Especially if any pool is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's the spot so, right there. I try, I try, you know, I'm not that tall, so I try to stand up a little bit high and my two toes. I'm like, ah, I don't want to go above my chin. So. <laughs> but, uh, safety first. Safety, that's yeah. Right, I, like I don't want to have to swim around. It's hard to smoke cigars when the water is at your chin. Yeah, well, I, I make the best of it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you guys both pull that off really yeah. well. Yeah, it works. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, now let, let, me, let me ask, I'll ask this question for the both of you. So, so when you guys were starting your, I call them entrepreneur endeavors, really. Yeah. When you were starting them, and you started yours, Josh, and started doing the, the videography and audio and interviews and stuff like that, were you, while you were doing job, jobs, uh, actual jobs, were you, were you lining things up, like all in big one wham as like a sprint, and then you would do the jobs and you'd look for more, like. And this goes with the consistency side, like struggling to stay consistent. Were you, like, would you be at a shoot and, like, when you had time, would you be talking to right. other jobs, or were you, was it just big one wham and then you did the job? Well, you try to keep those customers happy. That's where consistency lies, I think, in right. the businesses. Current customers or just current all? customers? Yeah, okay. You know, that next project is going to lead to the next one. You know, staying consistent in that fact, that form making sure that client's happy. They email you back and say, look, we need this change, this change, and that change. Making those edit revisions, you know, that's key. Yeah, yeah, with that open line of communication. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And would you say the same, Aaron? Like, were you, like you said recently that you guys acquired a lot of properties in 2018. Yeah. But while those properties were getting renovated, sure. were you still looking at other properties Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean i was so I, I being proactive is basically what i'm trying being to proactive is always key yeah. but uh the thing about it is why i always say we i always say agents there's properties i've actually pretty much i've acquired because of agents that sent me properties over before they even made it to the market really yeah that would be right there right? That i mean that's a huge thing for you yeah relationship so i mean it's not like you know they got both ends of them too. I mean, so it worked out for everybody. It's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I would imagine with both you guys, you know, basically running your own business. You don't, Josh. You don't have. Do you have a staff? I had four people working with me part time, at, well, actually full time, uh, a couple of them, and then for several yeah, years the economy so. crashed. Right about the time you got back, you got back into it, I think. Yeah. Uh, and as far as the real estate side goes, and um, so in my industry, I ended up renting out part of my studio downtown half of it to another company, which is you know, basically my competitor in some senses, but it, it brought down all, all my overhead. And so at this point, where I am now is it's a lot more, I mean, it's a lot more, it's free. It really is. And so and you're on your own I, now I, or you have part time? No, yeah, yeah. So I, I will hire out like per job contracting in what comes in yeah. and hire out audio technicians, camera assistants, DPs. You know, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. What's DPs? Uh, director of photography. Okay. Um, and so uh, those are uh, key people that are are basically running their own businesses too. Right. Um, and, and so a lot of the market, the way it's changed over the last ten years, has gone in that direction. I feel um, a lot of the larger companies cut way back and. Well, because you got some kid like me that yeah. gets out of college yeah. that finds a new passion, jobs, and then they, they they run down the price so low. Yeah, and uh, it, it, that's where I find my consistency. Trying to as far as billing goes, like, look, you're gonna get what you get, so go ahead. If you don't want to take my price, 
and do it based off our portfolio, et cetera, then you know, I'm only going to go so to, to such a low price. That's self-respect for yourself, right? Yeah. At least I would think. Yeah. At least as long as you're not too prideful of it, because there are some businesses. Well, that's getting better at what I do is the, is right. the other side of that. So you're still being proactive. Proactive. That's at learning new. Proactive uh, yeah. networking, marketing. And we, we just talked talk about, about this last week. This time last week. We had our own podcast. Yeah, well, it wasn't Where did we right. check that out? <laughs> you only got a sample of what It's all fair. It's all fair. But, um, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's about how do you grow because the marketplace adapts. And you got to be able to adapt to the marketplace to stay above. Like, you look at large organizations like Amazon or Walmart, they're always adapting. You know, you look at, let's just use Amazon as an example. Uh, right now, you know, they start off by books, selling yeah. books. Yeah. You know, 20 years ago, who, who would think that this company's stock is worth a thousand plus dollars yeah. years later? And they're selling everything. And they're selling everything. Everything under the sun. Yeah. And I'm just using that as an example. It's not like the, my top go to. I still use retailers to this day. But just using that as an example, you got to be able to adapt to the marketplace to stay ahead. Yeah. And as Josh mentioned, I mean, in production, you got to be able to adapt with the changes. There's, you know, there's, what do you I mean? What do you use right now in, in your market as far as mediocre? I mean, do you use source marketing drones? Do you use, oh, yeah, drones. I mean, there's so many different things that I you have to adapt to. FAA pilot license so, drones where you didn't have to have that in the beginning, and now you do. So uh, we got that, things like that. You just got to keep adapting. Yeah, and you have to stay on top of obviously what the trends are. With Absolutely, you buy the trends. Yeah, oh, with sure. the rates, yeah. economics. You know, just seeing what's going on with the marketplace itself. See, there's different strategies that change as well. Yeah. And you got to be able to stay ahead. I mean, and not necessarily stay ahead, but you got to know what's going on with current events. Yeah. So yeah. that's the that, question. That Take that that layer back a little bit. You know, when you guys are doing this stuff and you are trying to stay ahead, be progressive. You know. Uh, proactive, all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the, 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 the key of it is, is with the consistency side of it, which is, you know, struggling to stay consistent, you guys have a choice when you're focusing on your current customer, you know, you, or your current project, Aaron. Yeah. You don't want to just necessarily do a start and finish, and then you have to, like, start from scratch, and then you have downtime and do all that stuff. That's yeah. that, that balance side of it for both of you guys. Yeah. But you, but you don't want to move forward too quickly and, like, buy your next property, start doing that, take your crew guys from your current job and that, that project delay. So there's that yeah. consistency thing that you want to go from a start and stop mentality then also to a, you're constantly and consistently moving forward with all of that. And on top of that, I mean, it's amazing. You guys are both educating yourself in the, the respective fields. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can't necessarily start gutting a house and then putting in stuff that you put in a house five years ago because oh, not that flooring, that cabinet, that, that, that paint color, that's, that's not gonna sell five years Absolutely. later, you know what I mean? Hey, I got some extra stuff from the past, I got extra supplies, so I'll just paint this room this color. Well, you might be shooting yourself in the foot over a coat of paint. Oh yeah. And it might cost you $5,000 on a house because they're gonna be like, ah, this is a little outdated. You know what I mean? Like, I see that. And same thing with you is, Josh, when you're you're going into a new project and you, you had your own crew, like you are talking about at one point, you had your own, you know, you had this team of people. Now all of a sudden they're getting picked up by other people. You go like, hey, I got this big job. You're gonna love it. You're like, well, I'm, I'm booked for the next six months. Mm -hmm. And you're like, shit. So now you also have to like keep building up your Rolodex of, mm -hmm. of, of talent, of people, those those different positions that you're gonna need. I mean, how do you guys peel that layer back and keep that in your respective fields? Like, how do you actually accomplish that? Because that's one of the things that I, what, go ahead. No, to finish, but. No, I was gonna say, it's not just, I mean, like saying the treetop level things of, you know, doing that. Yeah, this is what we need to do, and this is it's how do you guys do that? So from my understanding, I mean, really, it comes down to relationships, and it sounds like from Josh has been saying the same as as well. You know, you're developing relationships with. You know, for me, I'm developing more relationships with contractors because I don't have the same contractor I start off with from day one sure. to today. Sure. So it's just always about developing relationships. I mean, a lot of people do want to work retail, then they want to work with developers. Okay. Because there's more, there's more there's more room for them to make profit. So, where we're keeping keep consistent work. So, I mean, at the same time, we want to keep, because what happens is, if I don't develop any more relationship with any more contractors, I won't, I'll have a project, I'll buy it, yeah. they'll sit there. Yeah. They'll sit there, month one, month two. Yeah. But if I'm not consistently developing relationships, it's not gonna keep growing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree with that, I, at least for, from what I think. I, what I like about this conversation is that it, I think, there's a, a portion of consistency where there's the the sense 
where you have to also have like think tanks. Yeah. Where it's like, do you, are you going to be the ones who just like go with the flow and just like keep up with the trends, or do you guys like actually think of stuff that's new that may set a trend? Because that's going to project so, you even. So I'm glad you said that. More. So, so think tanks. I mean, I go to, to conferences and seminars to understand yeah. what's going on with current events. So I travel a few times a year see what's going on because there's a lot of things I learn as I go within the business itself. Yeah. And so if I'm not doing that, I start falling behind. I noticed myself doing that in 2016, 2017. Even though I wasn't fully involved 100% full time, I noticed that I fell backwards a lot yeah. because so much has changed since when I got started back in 2012. And so I noticed that, okay, yeah. how I approach things, how, you know, how, what do I do on my day-to-day -day basis, yeah. it's changed. Or even style combinations, I can see like yeah, trends, like, yeah. especially like like older trends, I feel, yeah. I'm not in the business, but I feel no, like yeah. they're coming back again. Absolutely. Like, the, like wood finishing, like hardwood floors, oh, yeah. stuff like more antique style, like I noticed like one big thing that's coming yeah. back is like the barn door, like oh yeah, the sliding. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I, I mean, one of my projects. I mean, yeah. who, no, I want that. who knew like ten yeah. years? Like mm -hmm. it, it's so funny because like it, it's, it's all of like bourbon cigars, like authenticity. Yeah, is like coming back. Absolutely. So like plain devil's advocate with like the struggle of consistency. Yeah, <laughs> that's not consistent. No. It's just like all. But it draws well, back. It, so it draws only, back. Yeah, the only consistency yeah, is just like fashion. Yeah. You know, trends come back. Yeah. You know, and I mean, look at, look at like the, the, the movies right now. That's the same thing. Entertainment is constantly going back. You all know recreating. Know I mean? It's all recreating. It's yeah, not just retro, the fact retro. It's retro. not the fact that, the, yeah, it's not just, it's not, I don't think it's necessarily that they can't come up with new ideas. It's just like, that was a great bad. idea. So if you yeah. incorporate something that was tried and true, like that sliding barn door, the, or, you know, like those, for that. I would love to have that in my, my smaller master bath because yeah. when I open the door, it goes, I mean, enough room to open it all the way in a sense, Full but it goes, yeah. it goes right into the shower. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you can't like necessarily like have the door open and jump in the shower. You open the door, yeah. step to the side, close it and all that stuff. If yeah. I had a sliding barn door or whatever, yeah. on the outside of that, you just slide it and then slide you jump it, you, it, you know? Jump in absolutely. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But I think you're, you're hitting on the topic of continuing education. Absolutely. And that's any industry. You can't any just industry. keep doing the same thing. That's, when you hear consistency sometimes, and that's maybe the point you're, you're talking about also, Jake, is that when you think about consistency, it's like, uh, I think of that movie, the movie Joe Dirt, you know, where it's like, oh no, I, I, sell, I sell black snakes and sparklers, because that's what I like, and yeah. I know that you know, they're good, and it's like, you need to expand, yeah, exactly. The same thing like the cigars, the bourbons. Oh, yeah. like, if you are in the, the cigar industry, if you are you know trying to stay competitive, like even like the state liquor here, yeah. with all the bourbons, and it's like, yeah, you want to make sure you have some of the tried and true ones, yeah. but if you aren't necessarily like trying to figure out what the new, the hot, the and not necessarily you, you get behind every new little boutique or every little like oh they did this on this house. Well, it has to be strong enough yeah. to actually sell. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing mm -hmm. drones in your industry, Josh, and like it was just like oh I saw this done, it's really <laughs> cool, and you spend six months like buying drones, training yourself, doing all this stuff, oh, and then thanks. six months later, yeah. it's like, that's old. You know, it was hot for a, a blip on the time. No, guess what, now, now everybody that hires us to do a production, like, oh yeah, can you, you also have a drone guy? Yeah, like, yeah. so that's the, that's the continuing education where you realize that this is something you have to get behind, yeah. so you have to do that so that you can consistently have good business. Because yeah. if you're like, no, I don't want do drones, I don't like the look of that. I didn't want to train or something. Or I didn't want to train, or I didn't want to like, hire someone. But it sounds like you were ahead of that. Like you were at the, you yeah. saw it a few times and got in it. And now, huge. when people ask you that question, you already got it. Yeah. Like you're already there. Yeah, I had to take the drone test, like what? It's a federal test, so a FAA test, I had to take it twice now. And they just now changed the regulations to where now, once you get your license, you can do a, uh, supposedly that's what's coming up, is you can just do an online refresher instead of that. Like three hour test, it's brutal. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> That's so test. interesting. I, I think that at least like with struggling with consistency is a really big, big problem nowadays. What what is? Like just the fact of struggling with consistency. I think it is uh, so part I mean, of this conversation what do you mean by that? Let me ask you that before I, I say my two cents. Well, I just mean that I mean, it's much like any other topic that we talk about. Like, there's so many aspects in life now that, like, there never used to be. Like, we're well connected with everyone around us. Like, we see how other people are doing yeah. while also trying to, like, we may see something on, like, social media and we 
like what they're doing. So you want to may try maybe try something new, and there's like this big pitch on like like don't always be comfortable in what you're doing. So yeah. like you're making sure that like you're always progressing and it feels like you're always in new territory. Yeah. So then at least for me, like I when I feel that way, I'm feeling like I'm not being consistent. And then it struggled like it, it just like progressively falls into other categories of my life because I'm doing too many things. Because we're just always connected to all of this information so it's like narrowing down yeah consume that's a great term yeah and so it's like almost anymore it's like to be consistent and to stop struggling with consistency it's like you have to almost narrow down like what josh was talking about like narrow down your passions like what what's my like what is my narrow route absolutely while it it almost looks like a bourbon if if I had to like tool. if I had to picture it, it almost looks like a, a funnel, like a track. Yeah. Like like if you're like you stay consistent and the the more you get more consistent, like that's when you like branch out. Absolutely. Well I, yeah, and so I was I was doing some some reading uh, about this whole topic and one of the things that I liked about it and I think it'll it'll fuel or feed off of what you're saying, Jake, is it, it's it's not necessarily the, the mindset, like so everyone talks with not everyone there's 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 a, a <laughs> mindset of like fixing to what you want to accomplish right and that's yeah. the whole thing is like you set your goal and that's what you're shooting for yeah. and that's your your mindset is that just that finish line so it can be it can be a, a closer one it can be a farther one yeah. down the road you know like you know you a dollar amount you want in your bank account a type of house a you know how many how many employees and your 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 video production you know, company, Josh, or, you know, how many houses you are able to handle at one time. Yeah. It was changing the mindset from the accomplishment side of it to really focusing on, like, what you want to be. And that's where I, I think is another way of saying what you're, you're getting to, Jake, is that it's, it's, it's changing the mindset to focus on mainly, like, what you want to be. Yeah. So you want to be a, a, a video production company. You want to be a good family man. You want to do all that stuff. And it's like that frames every decision. It's not just the accomplishment. Because the accomplishment, you can have all this stuff and it's like you're, you're aiming for that stuff, but then all of a sudden that became becomes the, the end all be all. That's the thing that like you get thrown other things out of the way, you sacrifice other aspects of your life. But if what you want to be in different areas of your life, with you, Aaron, with your business, you know, you, you pick what comes first yeah. in your day to day. What do you want to be? The mentality of like you want to be a businessman. So that's where all this this the mentality starts all of these steps of the continuing education. The, the networking, all this stuff, because you want to be uh, successful well, you know is an overused term, I, but you want to do this really well in all these things while taking care of your family. You want to do all this stuff. So yeah. you want to, what do you want to be in this? That part of your life is going to frame every other aspect of your day-to-day decisions. Yeah. So I'm, I look at myself as a student always. So I look at myself as, I mean, I am a business owner, but at the same time, I'm always a student. So I look at myself as somebody else that she wants to keep growing and wants to keep, to keep learning. That's and that's that's yeah. really why I look at myself every day. So it's like, I, I go to these seminars, I go to conferences, just to be always a student. And that's your and mindset. That's, that's everything my mindset. And everything I do, I'm a student. I can, I can act like I know it all, but I'd rather want to keep yeah. growing. Because you know, the moment I, I'm a know-it-all, the moment I stop learning. Stop growing. You stop growing at that moment. Yeah, you know, it's a And, and you can go person. into anything. At the same time, you can go into health, nutrition, or it can be anything else. When we say you know it all, you're that expert. Could be the same moment that you just you taper off. Yeah. And so I, I'm always a student. I want to keep growing. I want to keep learning, and I want to take things to the next level in any way I can. And I look at goals as a student. Yeah. And, and, and obviously I have to plan it out for the business itself. But it's like student first, and then everything I need to do and what I want to see applies to what I'm going to do. Yeah. Well, that's a good that's a good metaphor of a student. You know, I, I think these days, you know, the, the typical education, especially in, in the U.S., is, is kind of dogged upon. Is that it's you know it's not practical. You're learning things. You know what I mean? And you're, yeah. You know, oh, you're just regurgitating it on a test and then forgetting it. The the true form of that student, what you're you're talking about, and what I'm hearing is, is that you're learning all this stuff so that when you actually come up to that that situation, whether it be you know assessing a a a investment property 
yeah. right? And in a project property, yeah. that's your test. That that's you studying all yeah. all, yeah, all study semester for, yeah. for your midterm for your final, and then so when that comes up, you've retained. You make sure that you stay sharp, so that then you can actually execute all the things you learned, and then all the mistakes you're making, all the all the wrong answers that you, yeah. you get. You want to get the actual right answer so that you can review that and then hopefully be able to correct that not only for that project but possibly for the next one on top of your then continuing student mentality where yeah. the next you know if you have the midterm of one property and then the final is a bigger property that you could you, you stand to make more money off of oh, yeah. now it's like all right so what did i learn for the midterm what did i miss on that where could i have made a little bit better improvement where i could have like capitalized a little bit more here and then all the while you're you're still learning. You also you travel to I think you go to like Vegas sometimes, right? Yeah, once or a year. Once a year for that that yeah. that convention, you yeah. learn there, and that's in the, between those things. You're like, all right, yeah. so I take this that I learned I here. Was Palm earlier this year for yeah. for you, something else. You take what you learned in your previous test, which was the, the actual business execution. Yeah. And then you, you you learn what you do in the the, the in, interim, and then you have your next test, which is the next property, if you will. Yeah. And all of a sudden you apply all that stuff, and it's it's easier. It's you know, it's more successful. You make more money. You you, you realize you can walk away from uh, an investment property. Yeah, I'll as, walk as, away as, from any. Absolutely. Yeah. But in the beginning, you may not have done that as well, yeah. as easily. You're like, ah, I might be able to make a little bit of money off of this. Yeah, and there's been times where I'm like, you know what? I missed out on this opportunity. Yeah. And and, and at the same time, it's like, okay, I missed out on that opportunity. But what if it really did hurt me because I didn't know what to do? Right. And, and, and I had that problem, and not only problem, that, that challenge, even a year ago, where I walked away from a and I'm not going to too in depth, but like I walk away from a lot development, which is being built in condos right now. And it's like that lot development was an existing structure where I was going to just remodel it and then build on the second second lot. Yeah. But at the same time, the numbers just didn't make sense for me. But if I did take on that for the numbers I had to buy it in at, it could have hurt me. It could have crushed me. Well, hindsight's always twenty twenty. That's the way I look at it. You know what? Sometimes. <laughs> You're not prepared for that opportunity. Absolutely. That's and so it's like, but what do you do in order to progress into an opportunity? It's it's by challenging yourself to be better. Get that. But also, you want to look at like the your. So I use KPIs, which is key performance indicators. Absolutely. And what it does is tracks and measures what I'm doing on certain projects. How how did this work out? What did I do that made this end goal become? Life. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, really just having those pieces in line helps track and keep the organization together. Well, and I'm sure, like, now, a year later, that if that would have happened now, you probably would have executed. Executed. Absolutely. And, and, and if I may add to Steve's point, I'll, I'll, I wanted to translate that sure. to something else. And that's, sure. and that's what I want to make it to. I'm not trying to make it solely focused on the real estate. I want it to yeah. be no, the full that's spectrum of life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great yeah. example. I mean, that's what you can, you can, you can apply what you're saying to yeah. pretty, pretty much anything. But I, I, I wanted to translate that to like just something that I experienced this past week. Just interviewing for the fact that yeah. it... Yeah, in, this, in this interview, I, I thought that this was like the most the, the, the most serious interview because I wanted it that much harder, sure. if that makes sense. And, and as I was, you know, getting bussed over to the office building, I was thinking to myself, like, what all can I say? And it, and it, it, it dawned on me that, like, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't really matter on the mistakes that I have made in the yeah. past, like like yeah. a, a bad business opportunity that I didn't choose that ended up really well for someone or whatever, yeah. but like when I went in there and was talking to Paul and Alex, right. you know, they were asking me questions about like my mistakes. Absolutely. And I was completely honest and they could tell that. So I think that like learning, like you said, Aaron, yeah. like learning from mistakes, being humble, being honest, yeah. like even in, in bringing it full circle, like into the consistency thing, like maybe I haven't been like consistent at all in the last year, but at least the hum, like the humbleness, if I'm trying to get to the level of consistency, yeah. I have to realize what has happened in the past that has put me either in an inconsistent place or yeah. in a deeper hole than what I wanted to be. So like when I was answering questions, like. Like I said, I was being honest. I 
ask you know ask myself like what what experiences have made me that were mistakes have yeah. made me better for it like what like I was thinking like like this is like a sales role so like I was thinking of like what did the say what were what were the problems in each opportunity that I had that I screwed up that made me better and kind of forged me into who I am just a year yeah. from now. So I, I think that like if you're someone that is looking to be consistent and yeah. truly struggling with being consistent right now, that like you truly, you know, it's not always that same where don't, you know, always look in the past because you'll just stay there. No, learn from your past. Right. Because you're trying to get out of the hole, you're trying to learn all these different steps about yourself, but don't lie about it. It did happen, but say, this is what I learned from it. That means a lot more to a real person than someone that doesn't really give a shit. Yeah. I mean, key is, like you said, learning from the past. Yeah. Yeah, that has to be a consistent behavior. I mean, you talk about consistency, I mean, that, that has to be what we're talking about here, a, a consistent behavior trait. You know what I mean? That's got to be something where that is that mentality of what do you want to be versus what is your goal? What do yeah, you want to yeah. accomplish? You know, it's that, that, that consistent, like every day you're learning something from it. And that, that, that sounds cliche, but I mean, that, that you're, you're speaking volumes there, Jay, based off of what Aaron said, is that yeah. that's something that you, know, you may not have had six months ago or, or a year ago. And based on our conversations, it's, it's when this comes up, this type of, I mean, it's, it's, Something that you can introduce, I guess what I'm saying, it's not a fault of yours, it's what the growing pains, right, of going through the yeah. life changes and everything like that. If you change the mentality of what you want to be, that's where you, you start, if you can introduce this consistency of a, of a life trait, of behavioral trait, of right. learning from day to day, from, from things in the past. We've talked about that on the podcast a lot. Well, and that's in why different, I, I guess, arenas. Yeah, and that's why I always argue about, like, if you're in a rough spot, it I mean, within reason, yeah. You know, assuming that it's like an okay place, but you're just like not happy, and you're wanting, you have a goal to be somewhere. Yeah. Like you, obviously, you have to have a plan to get there. But just know, like you, you have to go through it regardless. So if you don't go through it now, you're just going to go through it again. Or you're always going to so, go through it. Yeah. yeah so you know. so you may as well like go through Build the it. flames. Yeah. And come out. Planes. There's a lot of flames if you want to do that. I know, but that of, I've been through a lot of flames. So, but know. would you rather forge yourself with struggles, exactly. or would you rather have everything be easy and end out, you know, on exactly. top? Whether it's just explain you know, that. Fi- yeah. Whether it's financial, because you're just starting a business and it's you know, financial struggle between you and your wife. When we first started, my wife wasn't working, and that was a lot of financial uh, burden at that time, just starting out a business. Did you have kids at the time? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had kids right away. Like, we met. Like, we had kids like, right away. So. Uh, <laughs> got excited. You <laughs> got excited. Yeah, we were super excited. <laughs> You're like, how did I land a girl like this? Yeah, got to lock this down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 and uh, she was a gorgeous girl, so I had to take advantage. But. Um, Would you say you, you kind of are fighting above your weight class there? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. By the way, she does call Steve uh, pretty blue-eyed. Oh, Jesus. Deep boys, smooth boys, yeah. <laughs> male figure, De- devil figure, male. Oh, okay. Male figure. You don't have a tail, do you? No, not that, not anymore. Oh, got it. Um, so, I, I want to introduce this. So, when I'm thinking about this, this, this topic of, of the struggle, inconsistency. My so Ron says you need to speak up. By the way, Josh. Ron. Ron Jenkins. Jenkins. Uh, uh, so, Ron, here's here's something. There's there's a difference of of listening to yourself if you need to take a vacation, hopefully plan, if you need to take a, a mental or physical health day, if you're not feeling well, and I don't think we're gonna have the time necessarily to dive into it, but we can kind of incorporate it, like as far as things that we talk about a lot of times. One of the things I think with consistency is, is taking care of yourself, obviously, and, and the nutrition, the health, and everything else. Um, and we don't need to re- really address that as much unless you guys want to, but some of the things that I struggle with is that I'll be motivated for days, if not weeks at a time, and my energy levels up. I know I'm, I'm taking my, you know, taking care of myself, taking vitamins, you know, eating, eating well, not, not eating like shit, you know. So the chem- the body chemistry is 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 on point for that moment. Yeah. And it's not always that. Obviously, sometimes we talk about it on the podcast, but 
you know, doing this, we drink their nights, you drink a little bit too much, especially sure. on nights where you have stuff to do the next day. And then, so the, the, the idea or the concept of skipping days, because when people talk about consistency, I think it's unrealistic for, for most people, if not everyone, that the no days off, constantly going, constantly, because you will get burnout, your body will shut down, lack of sleep, uh, too many drinks, bad food, because you're like on the road as a salesperson, yeah. or if you're, you know, you're in the office, like, that I hear it all the time, people are like, yeah, I forgot, I, I forgot to eat today. I haven't eaten today. And you're just like, well, that, that's not okay because your body and your mind cannot function properly. But what, it, what so when I do it, like sometimes on my days off, I, I've said it before, is that my days off are Sundays and Mondays from my, my everyday job. And a lot of times I'm still doing stuff, uh, whether it be just posting or thinking about it, brainstorming, yeah. you know, coming up with notes, things like that. Not only with, <laughs> with the, it sounds simple to a lot of people, you know, working in a cigar shop, but there are ideas and events and doing like social media, all that stuff. The podcast is, as well on, on a side gig. Um, what do you like? There are days where on a Monday or whatever, when everyone else is working typically, that I don't even want to leave the house. I need to just not necessarily even sit in front of the TV, but I'll, I'll I don't want to leave. I'll order a pizza, you know, I'll have a cheat day. I need to just be myself. Sure. What are your ideas? Because I, I feel that it, that's looked down upon a lot of the time. So, so glad they say no, no days off. Because I, skipping days, when we talk about consistency, what, I'll, I'll, I'll say my piece after, but unless you guys cover it. But like, what, Josh, what do you think of that? That so skipping days. In the creative industry, I heard this one time, and it always stuck with me. And you know, I'm, I do writing. I do. I do writing. Uh, you know, script writing, whether it's for clients or my own personal endeavors, as far as writing goes. And still waiting on the zombie film. Still doing that. <laughs> love, love to do that one day. Uh, truly inspired by Steve. Yeah. Um, yeah. And not the zombie. They're not, sitting around, <laughs> the zombie. They're not sitting around drinking bourbon and cigars. That was where that all started. But so, hey. And um, so the one guy, this guy, I don't even remember why I even heard this from the reality. No, but it stuck with me ever since. There's a certain chemical moment in your brain when you relax. There's a certain frequency in your brain. It's all physical and science, so don't ask me too many deep questions. But we won't. It, it, <laughs> there's a moment. There's a there's a certain frequency. I think I just heard this on the radio. But there's a there's a moment. And there's a frequency that uh, create creativity is able to come out. And so there's a moment when you're not doing anything, and your, your life isn't full, you're not scrolling through a million things, posts on Facebook, and it's just a moment for you to calm down. That's when, that's when your brain is actually able to come up with ideas. And so I don't think people incorporate that enough into their, their daily routine, right. daily, where there's moments every day where you can just say, you know, ooh, there, oh, you know what? That idea just came to me, and that's yeah. why, because you <laughs> took time to get into that right frequency. Okay. Aaron, what are, you, what are, you, what are well, your thoughts on that? I definitely agree with that because you know what? We lack the time, like everybody's on the go, go, go. So the moment you wake up, you're on the go. You're out the door, off to the gym, or if you're, you're off to work or whatever your routine is. And sometimes we lack the time that we need to ourselves to reflect, self-reflect. Why are you doing what you're doing? You know, where, where are you trying to go with what your goals are? If you let it be your diet or you know fitness or whatever that is, what do you do to overlook everything? And a lot of times I still have that challenge myself. I, I wake up, so I'm just so used to be on the go. Yeah. I still challenge myself to that day to reflect. And so sometimes when you do reflect, you get that mind that allows you to think and grow in certain areas that you need to grow. And, and it, if that's in like you said, like eating and having days off to just kind of relax. We all should take each morning, you know, to ourselves to relax and kind of reflect on what we want to accomplish for that day. I think having a routine and, and doing like it's all it's all incorporated, right? I mean, yeah. you know, you're talking about your your brain frequency. I don't know the the science behind that either. I mean, it's just you know when you're you're talking, Aaron. Do you do you find yourself uh, skipping days that are planned, or is it just do you listen to your body? Do you both like do you like that you wake up and you're like I'm. I can't do it today. I'm not saying like canceling appointments. I'm not saying necessarily like just bailing on the entire yeah. day's plan yeah. and just yeah. saying, don't talk to me. I, like, I mean, do you find yourself coming across that rarely, frequently, every once in a while? What do you I mean? Yeah, you know, I have a time where like I'll look at things like, okay, this is my plan for the day or for the week. 
and it's what I want to accomplish. And not everything I plan to accomplish necessarily, mm -hmm. but I have a plan to accomplish. So when I look at that plan for the week, I'll look back at it like later in the week and say, okay, did I do this, this, and that? Yeah. And if I did, great. Let me try to keep consistent in that area. If I didn't, what do I need to do to be more consistent in that area? Yeah. And I, you know, I try to listen to my mind as much as possible. Like, so some days I'll feel, you know, not necessarily sluggish, but it's like, it depends on how I feel that day on what's going to get done. Right. And so it's like, if it's, for example, if I, if I don't make it to the gym one day, it's because my mind's just throwing off where it's at a different place at that time. It's like, okay, I want to get this, this, and that done. Okay. And so I, I, I do get those things done, but then at the same time, I like the consistency on making it to the gym for that day. So it's more like shifting the priorities at the moment. Exactly. So you, you, you reshuffle. Be more listening to your body at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 go ahead. No, no, I was just agreeing. What about you, yeah. Jake? Well, I mean, I think, I think you know, see where I stand on it, but it's, I don't know. I, I've been a part of the, the two fields, like where I was like trying to be like the most consistent I had ever been in my life for like two years with Corey and all of the, all of those. When you were with the, you, yeah. Max effort and right. all those endeavors. And I found out that I, like after a while, like I got burnt out. Yeah, because I was trying, I, here's what I found out at, at the end of all that, when that relationship had ended with Max Effort is that like I, that just, I, I was trying to be someone that wasn't who, who I am, which, and it doesn't mean that I can't be on a level like Corey because he does act like a, a machine sometimes, but even he has those days where like he 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 activates at a level so so high all the time that he, to be completely honest like he forgets things exactly. and that's what that's what happens yeah. when you're at a level like that yeah. constantly yeah. and you're so consistent that you almost become non-consistent in a very important time so, and, and I found myself doing that same thing, and I made mistakes in times that were very pertinent to my job at the time, where I messed up because I was so consistent. I was trying to do too many things, and I had a schedule. So, like, now, a year later, you know, I've, you know, gained weight and done all this stuff, but... I truly believe I'm much happier than I was a year ago, even though like the like there's more financial struggles, there's more job struggles, blah blah blah. But my mind is at ease. It's almost like it's almost like that Zach Brown band song, like Quiet Your Mind. Like I have to have those moments like you see where there's a day that I almost don't uh, that, that I literally try not to do anything. Where like, I don't want to talk to somebody unless, like, they reach out. Like, I'm not going to reach out to anybody. Like, my phone, like, it stays on the nightstand the whole day, and I may look at it, like, 5 p.m., and I'll get, like, I'll have, like, 10 texts from people, like, friends, family, be like, where are you at? And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, that's just, that, that's, like, my time. So it, I, I think it's very important to set that time, but also know who your audience is as well. Like know the audience, whether you have a friend that you're trying to do a business endeavor with, whether you're trying to do, whether you are like a contractor, like Josh, where you're really never off of the job. <laughs> like there's always someone that's like maybe wanting to reach out to you. So, but I think for me at least, I think it's so important to have that time, whether it be like two hours in the evening or some time where you devote to yourself where I'm really gonna try not to think about something because oddly enough like you said Josh those are the times where you will get new ideas better ideas and for me it's pertinent to write them down when I do have those moments like where I'm sitting there like smoking a cigar on the patio and it's like a Sunday evening and something will just like come to me I'm like that's a great idea mm -hmm. so it's like I think that's 
so, so important to even people at a higher level to sometimes just dumb it down for a day or a few hours every day or every other day. Like corporate environments, they, they're all changing now because they all believe in that. Yeah. Saying, Look at Google. It didn't used to be that way. It was go, 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 crush your competitors, go, 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 and then you forget your family, you forget this, and all you do is worry about that one thing, and then... Look at Google, Yeah, now for instance. they've changed, they've done that whole, yeah. I mean, they are... moments where they allow you to just reflect and... Google, I think, is a corporate business model that, like, a lot of businesses try to implicate nowadays, yeah. because they see that it's not all about that. Like, obviously, do your job, do it right, and think of new ideas, but the think tanks, yeah. like that's what I was trying to get to get out earlier, yeah. that time to come up with something new, that's how you succeed, that's how businesses succeed. It how did the Bourbon and BS podcast come up? Like, where was that moment? Like, was it like, you know, just like a, a light switch that just comes on. So but, whiskey and cigars. But it's when you're at that moment, is when it comes out. It's not when you're busy at work, or you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that. No, you're absolutely right. I, I think, so one of the things that I'm, I'm working on, for, for example, um, you know, Ray, Ray Chester says he's been, quote, dumbing it down for a year now, and he's retired, so. Um, I think it's been longer, Ray, just so you know. But I think for, for I've been dumbing it down for a year now, never, never felt better. Yeah, yeah. 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 laughing. Good, good for you, Ray. I feel like it was sarcastic. <laughs> no, he, he has been dumbing it down. Um, good for you. But I would say all of these things considered, it's it's you can do that. When I'm, when I'm looking at skipping days, is when I crash. As long as it, it's still a, an evaluation of that moment that I don't want to necessarily sacrifice. Like for you guys that you know own your own business, for example, there are days that you 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 cannot if you cannot miss. There are there are Shoot events days. that you huh? <laughs> Shoot days. Yeah. You yep. cannot. Yeah. Yes, so, so I had to get up at. You know, I had to be in Mount Vernon at like 7.45, and that, that night before I kind of loosey goosey with the alcohol, and my wife was celebrating the camp, the camp, my uh, kids were both going to camp, and we the <laughs> game was over, and we were drinking margaritas, and I'm like, oh crap, yeah. tomorrow's coming early. So you were shooting today? Uh, yesterday. Oh, okay. Today was, uh, more margaritas? Yeah, <laughs> no, this is not bourbon now. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's fine, I mean, it, it, that, that's, that's to the point, right? There are days that you do have to, you know, pull up your bootstraps and just fucking go do it, you know what I mean? There, that's being an adult. I mean, unless you have some sort of physical or mental illness that is gonna keep you from your commitment, that's the, the skipping days mentality. It's, it, you do have to choose it. Sometimes it's like, all right, tomorrow I gotta take it a little easier. I can cancel this appointment, or I can reschedule this. No, no damage done. Yeah, you know what I mean. I can I can set my phone down, but it's like I, I just need to be able to do this, and I can do it. Yeah, and I think that's if you can schedule those. Like that's where you schedule vacation time. That's where you schedule like a day off that you can look forward to. And sometimes that that is ruined because your commitments will then trump that. It'll it'll get in the way of your relaxation time. Like I said. I think skipping days, my mentality is, is that I will go a lot of times until I finally crash and I try, as, try hard as hell not to have a sacrifice at that point of, of something that's going to impact short or long term. So I don't think skipping days is a bad thing. I think it's something that is necessary. You know, skipping days out of gym, you know, or, or you know, cheat days. Yeah, I got to take my family or drop my kids off at camp. Like, I didn't work out that day because of that. So the next day I had to get back in it. And And that's the key to it. That's the consistency thing. That's the the, the struggle is is that you have that, but then you have to get back on. You have to get, yeah. yeah, It's literally skipping a day or skipping an hour. It's that that mentality. I'm just afraid that, like, when when people are at, at that level where they're like a machine that, things happen like that where they do crash and then there is something that is yeah. massively important in their life that they completely forget about. Completeness. And that's, that's I mean, that's what was happening to me. So like, I, I just like try to set the days where I am not thinking about anything, my, my off days. And that's the scheduling part. That's, yeah. that's part of the consistency. That's the behavioral trait. My think. biggest problem yeah. though that I will say is that when I scheduled, the, the, the key was is that when I schedule those days or those that time is to make sure that when something else comes about to not schedule it during that time and understand that it's okay to say no. It is Unless okay it's something oh, yeah. pertinent. 
Absolutely. I get freaked out. I like. I, I gotta respond right away. I know. I do too. Call, I gotta send a proposal right yeah, now. Yeah. Like be the first one in because I, if I first went in, I win. And I'm like, but that's know, a good quality because you care. care. Yeah, that's a great about quality. Money at that point, but you know, also, yeah, if you have other things going, I mean, I, you know, there's times when my wife said, like, you know, we're on vacation, you know, put down phone, you know, things like that. But a good response would be say, hey, I hope that you understand, like, this is a scheduled time to where I'm doing my think tank or I'm relaxing. Can I? Get this to you tomorrow. I'm coming here for counseling. So I know you got it all. So I'm just trying. Oh, to, I definitely don't have I mean, it all. If I can just put all my burdens on you, just tell me. Yeah. <laughs> I can do. You want to, uh. Get after it. Yeah. So something for me, like yesterday, I spent time with the kids all day, and I, you know, I decided to take the day off. And like the first half of the morning, like, you know what? What am I doing? I need to be working. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, we talk about relationships on as far as the topic being today. So it's like, you know, relationships. It's like, okay. But why am I doing what I'm doing? It's, it's for them. So why, you know, why am I feeling bad spending time with them for the day when you know I'm thinking about work? It's a shift in mentality. I mean, again, it's, that's that same so thing. That's a challenge there. You well, know, yeah, you're consistency. Good. It's like I want to spend time with them, but it's like I'm thinking about work. But at the same time, I need to spend time with them and enjoy my time with them too. Do you remember that article that I mentioned? Like it would have been like 20 or so episodes ago, but it was back when I was looking for another job. Yeah. During Christmas time this past year, I do, yeah. And there was an article that Alicia forwarded me, and it was interesting to read because one of the main points of it was that yeah. nowadays, no matter your age, we all struggle with that same sense. Yeah. Because there's a mentality of always going, always working, putting yeah. your nose to the grindstone twenty four seven because that's where you, that's how you can reach your goals. Oh yeah. But then. When you actually do have time off, you're all you're thinking about is work, and you're not and valuing that, that time for exactly. what it is. That's, so it's like it's almost flip flops. Because is. then when you're working, you you're thinking about time off, and then when okay. you're not working, you're thinking about working. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just and, 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 hey, hey, it depends on what you're doing though. I mean, as a business owner, I mean, like you can't just anymore in today's age, like your phone is on there. Oh yeah. Guaranteed. I hundred percent your phone was on today and it was on you. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. And that's because that is what you are, that's how you're supporting your family. Oh yeah. So I mean it, it's that part of that balance we always talk about, that's the consistency side of it, is that you can't just turn anything off completely. No in, in my opinion. I got three so lead you, generators on my phone that I constantly aware of. Bing! I'm like, oh, I know there it is. I go right to it. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. But but it's 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 part of that and then the people you surround yourself, your family, your friends, everyone yeah. else. I mean that's yeah. something that you will have absolutely look at and if you need to step away to take a phone call, as long as you're not neglecting that that, that part of your life, right? Your exactly. day off your time. I mean it doesn't even have to be the family time. That's very important. Yeah. Your time. You know what I mean? That's it. There are times where you will have to actually get on your phone where you're not planning on being on your phone. Oh, yeah. And that, that's just because that's what you're choosing to do with your life. Yeah. You can easily, either you guys especially, you can choose to have a nine to five right. if they exist anymore, which that's few and far between. But when you leave there and you're not being paid hourly, they can't call you. You know, you don't have the responsibilities of a business owner that if you don't pick up their phone or they don't answer a text because you're not needed like that, that's a lifestyle. Yeah. You know, but you're doing this 24 seven as business owners. That's one of the toughest jobs you can have is because you guys are consistently on the clock. Oh yeah. You can't just be like, I'm gonna take two days off, turn my phone off. Cause then when you turn it back on, you're like, I just lost my family, myself, the company, my oh, yeah. employees. Nice I nice just, check. Yeah. And yeah. now it's like, well, good thing okay, now is that I am off for the next two months because I got shit to do. Yeah. Like there's your time off. So again, that's that consistency. I think it's all about that scheduling side of it. You know, again, going yeah. back to that, it's, it's it's trying to fit that that part in. Well, with you two, let, let's ask this question: like, how, being like an entrepreneurial role, how do you balance your lives? Do you do you feel like you have like balanced lives? Do you feel like what's your feeling? I like well, let Aaron. Sure, yeah. Uh, let, well, I was gonna say one part of my my relationship with Aaron, cigar shop. We hang out. We got to know each other. Yeah. The last few years, and uh, he's become a nice sounding board for me. I mean, we had we had some serious long talks. Like, yeah, you know, what can I do here? What can I do there? Uh, that's one of those things that uh, does that answer your question? Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Aaron. So I mean, 
I just think it's interesting. Like we've had like actually a lot of entrepreneurs on this yeah. podcast, and and not that we don't like that because I think a majority of people are like nine to five. But yeah. you guys actually have the we, we take the we take the call, we follow up, we get yeah. it in. And but you're really not off the clock. It's just like so. How do you? A lot of my business hours are go are from like nine to five. Okay. For me, but. Okay. I, fl- I flex a lot of my time, so I, I, I try to take control of my day. Not that, when I say try, there's a difference of try and do. <laughs> so uh, I'll try to keep it like 9 to 5, but sometimes it can be from 7.30 to 4.30. But I might have some time in the middle of the day where it's just nothing. Yeah. You know, which is fine with me. Yeah. Because, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll create the day where it's like, okay, this could be my relaxed time, this could be this time. But I'll, a lot of times I'll fill in meetings and appointments at that time, too. Yeah, but I mean, like I, I keep that's walking. exactly right. That's what I do too. Same, same thing. Yeah, yeah. and so like I mean, when my day is off, I you know after like four, three thirty, four o'clock, I, I just turn my day off. Yeah. It's like it's time for family, friends, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll go to the star shop, hang out. Then I'll go home, hang out. And that's 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 my day. Yeah. Do you ever look at your phone? Like I mean, for I, business? I, honestly, I don't as much. Yeah. But the you moment do. I walk in, I I still do. But I don't as much. It's like, you know, I try I don't to think there's anything wrong with I don't turn off completely, but it's like my goal is to turn off. Yeah. The moment I walk in like to cigar shop or the moment I walk home. It's like my goal is to turn off. I try not to look at the phone as much as possible. Yeah. I still do, but I, I my goal is to just enjoy the time. That was one thing I struggled with, like being with a young being as a young contractor. Yeah. With doing video and photography yeah. is like even though I had a, you know, boss, air quotes, I didn't really know when the time was like when my end of the day was it's yeah. not that I was looking forward to that but it was just I'm one of those people that I really need to find <laughs> yeah <laughs> moments like you got to tell me so I really struggled with that at the beginning so I think it's interesting to hear it from you guys too so when you're talking to someone decade into the business right yeah. on top of your other yeah. job right yeah, you know, yeah. Two and then you're two decades yeah you're older yeah. um <laughs> But that comes with time. A lot of trial and error. <laughs> and, and, and Josh said that earlier, is the, the, you know, the failures. I mean, it's kind of what you were saying. I mean, it's, it's not embracing those necessarily or looking for them. It's literally just, that's part of the game. Oh, yeah. and, and that's going back to what we were talking about, with like learning from it consistently. Like you're always learning, yeah. not only for the progressive side of it, but you're learning as things go on. Not only bad, yeah. but they go very well. And that's the other thing too, like going to another topic, not to jump off topic, but like, going into health, nutrition, and fitness, for me, like, dieting and everything like that was one of those things, like, okay, I want to drop 20 pounds, or I want to drop 40 pounds. I'm not going to go too specific, but, like, I'll start it off, and I'll go on the program. I'll drop some weight, but then it's like, okay, do I stay on that routine, or do I go back? A lot of times when we say we want to do this, we'll go back to our old habits or anything else. But it's like, what do we do? Do we create a lifestyle into that, or do we build off of that? You know, and so... What I decided to do in my health and nutrition is like I build off of that because it's something I want to keep doing the rest of my life. And so I portray that the same way in my business. I want to go not, okay, let me go hit a certain financial figure and I'm okay, that's all I need to do. Yeah. It's like, okay, how do I make this consistently in a lifestyle that I do this on a day by day basis and stay consistent to that and stay accountable? Because the moment I stop, Stay consistent because I can say I want to hit this goal and stop there, and then go all the way backwards, worse than where I started off at. Yeah. Well, that's and, that start and stop thing with you and, and yeah. by your your project. Yeah, the project and that's or just that you're talking about. Yeah, that. exactly. Like fitness. You're getting, and I yeah. think that most people deal with that. Yeah. Day to day basis. Everybody wants to. Okay, I want to do it's this. fitness and their job. Yeah. And, and family. So and, and a lot of times you could throw off consistency with like, okay, I start. I want to lose twenty pounds. You lose fifteen pounds. And it's like, okay, man, I'm just not getting here fast enough. You go backwards. Well, yeah. And then you, you throw on another 25 pounds. <laughs> you know what I'm just saying? It's like, it happens. And, and it happens in business. It happens in health. It happens in every single area. It's just like, well, what do you do to stay consistent in that specific area? But how do you how do you do that once and not do it again? Is it's, the key. It's by how do you learn yeah. from losing 15 pounds and then gaining 25 back. Like, you learn by, you, by having, yeah. yeah, it's a consistency, but it's also having a pivotal moment that 
it's either you're gonna take one way or be another. And at the end of the day, you gotta choose one. Okay. Yeah. It's a serious so it's talk like, you have to have with yourself. You have to have that talk in the mirror. It's like, okay, I'm gonna look like this in the mirror, or I I, I, I can get to this point where I want to be this way. While also reaching this goal with my job. Uh, I mean, obviously, and yeah, also, I'm just saying, but it portrays and also being it portrays the best dad that I can. Yeah, it portrays in all different areas. As well. I mean, well, but that's that's I think you're you're it's, peeling back layers of the onion without even doing that is is. You want to lose 20 pounds. Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? You're not happy with the way you look? All right, well, more importantly, you feel like shit, probably. Chances are, I guarantee, yeah. whether it be emotionally, whether it be physically, most likely it's both. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all these other things, again, it's all intertwined. That's the consistent lifestyle. Yeah. Right? You're, again, going back to the constantly learning part. What am I doing? Someone else told me I read about this, and it's not going well, not losing the weight I want to, so I'm just going to give up. No, you actually... You start learning more, like to your that's student it. mentality. Yeah. You start learning more. All of a sudden, you're feeling better. Not only oh, yeah. like, yeah, you look a little bit better. That's great. Everyone wants to feel good about themselves. They want to close the right, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. But the benefits are way beyond that. You know, the benefits just scale. That's that B mentality versus the accomplish mentality. If you want to like, yeah, I want to be, I want to be able to, uh, you know, win a win a gold medal. It's sure. Like, great. Yeah. How, how are you gonna do that? Well, once I win the gold medal, then I'm good. Or do you want to yeah. keep doing it? It's it's a it what builds up to that gold medal. It's the training every day. It's eating right every day. It's it's working. Yeah. yeah same thing with a business. You know, I want to yeah. own my own business. I want to make six figures. I want to do. I want to make seven figures. I want to do all that stuff. Yeah. Well, if that's all it is, I mean, unless you're that type of there are there are the type of people that, that that do the checklist that do that whole thing where it's like once I hit this, then I'm gonna shoot for this, exactly. and this is how I'm gonna do it. It's not just that that write down goals on the We talked about that when stuff. Andy was on. We did, absolutely. And it's it's absolutely, it's the consistent aspect of it and actually realizing the benefits of, again, that B mentality. Yeah. yeah. You can be consistent, but you need to be prepared for uh, a little bit of failure sometimes. There's always failure. So, whether it's saving your money, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's like being, it's well, like keeping your composure. It, it's like keeping your composure, right, Josh? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you gotta keep there's a difference between failure and quitting. And that's what we need everybody to know. There's a difference because the moment you fail, you can get back up and keep going for that same goal. Or you can adjust your goal. Yeah. The moment you quit, you let everything go. And and you put yourself in the worst position that you ever were or could imagine of being before. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. that. All right, well, let's wrap it up with some closing remarks here. I, okay. I gotta say before, like, smoking the Romeo Julia, the, the bully. Yeah. When I had, I'm not on it right now, but when I had the, the George Remus with it, that was a better pairing for me. Because they complimented each other. I don't think anyone else had that or not, but. I'm doing it right now, right so. Now. Is that George Remus? Yeah. I want to try Yeah, I have a little bit I'm more. I'm trying to. The Romeo, yeah, absolutely. So, I, you know, before we get into the, 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 the closing remarks, I do want to thank our sponsors. Um, thank we, you. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Tinderbox and Easton for the, uh, the Padron. Yeah. Uh, Padron puts out some great cigars, as we talked about. Check it out if you're just tuning in now. Go back to the beginning of the podcast. We talked about the George Remus uh, bourbon and then also the Padron 3000 Maduro. So thank you, Tinderbox at Easton, Columbus, Ohio. Check it out. That will be 15% off the Padrones. Uh, just the core series, not the anniversary, not the any of the specialties, but just that Padron core series. 15% off. We'll be happy to, to send you guys a package if you want to call in, contact us. But mention the podcast, Bourbon MBS podcast. And thank you to Altus. Uh, and, Jake had a great experience with that company in his last couple of days, which was fantastic. But they make some great cigars. We're smoking the, the Romeo Julieta, yeah. the Bully 1875 blend, which is, uh, I think, a great pairing. Actually, better, not saying Padron is a bad cigar, but a better pairing with the George Remus. And then Via Cigar Company, we, uh, we're in the middle of it. We've contacted another manufacturer. I'm not going to give anything away, but we are going to be uh, working on another uh, gold, as we've mentioned, but now we're going to be working on potentially with trying to narrow it down a total of four different factories. Wow. So we're working our asses off for that that project. So uh, thank you guys to sponsors. Um, and I do want to say, Jake and I are going to be working on the next week or so, week or two. Uh, we are going to be finally taking the plunge into the Patreon field. So we will be publicizing all of that stuff. But if you are a listener, um, you know, we're not asking for much. We're just asking something where it's uh, going to be a little bit more self-sustaining yep. beyond just the sponsorship. So we do this every week. We're on episode 76. We want to get to 176, 276. So we got to get some out of it. Uh, stay tuned for that. You know, just a couple bucks, you know, all those, uh, um, you know, you see the, the charity thing. It's not really that. It's just if you're supporting it, you want to find a way to actually support it from wherever you are, whether you're in 
um, Columbus, Ohio, you're in Australia, you're in another part of the United States, another country, Ray across the, the seas as well. We're gonna have an avenue for you guys to do that. So we're trying to expand this and take this uh, to the next level with your guys' help. So appreciate that. And appreciate you guys for being here, Josh. I appreciate you guys. And, uh, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I will say I do like the Padron Maduro a little better with this whiskey. I don't know why, but maybe it's good. The richer, richer flavor. I think the Romeo would be really good with like a basic like old forester. There you go. Because of the smoothness. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, how about some closing remarks on uh, consistency and the struggle with it? Just stay, else you know, my, guys? my biggest thing is just stay, keep staying consistent, keep going at it no matter what your goal is. Just point to your target and aim for your target. It's like hitting a dartboard. You know, if you want to stay consistent, keep your eyes open, go for the dartboard. If you don't, it's like you know, shooting a dartboard with your eyes closed or a blindfold. Like so that. keep keep going at it. I like that. The metaphors on this freaking podcast. <laughs> Secret to life. I metaphors. love it. It's just funny. Josh Porter, how about you? Mine, mine might be a joke. Uh, I was driving over here. Closing remarks. Yes. In on this. My, I was driving over here. There was this fast and furious like looking car, and they, they blacked out the uh, you know the, the logos and all on the car. I was like, wow, that looks cool. It's fast. And then I saw the the I wonder who's driving, and I saw the, the license plate lastly, and it said Y E L O N E K. Y E L O N E K. Super slow. Alright, never mind. Go ahead. What is it? You don't want to say it. I don't know. Alright. Yellow, yellow, yellow neck. Yellow neck. <laughs> to the red neck. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that was great. That's your closing remark. That was great. That That's was your closing great. remark on consistency. Thank you for that insight. I love it, John. <laughs> no, thank you for all the things you said tonight. We actually had a lot of insight. On I love it. That I wasn't your, that wasn't your top one. Yeah. But you had a lot of input, and we appreciate you guys sharing and being a part of it. You guys have great insight. Thank, thank Jake, you. Guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate yeah, you guys having us. Freaking out of it. No, I, I honestly I, I don't want to regurgitate like what I already said, but I I I, I do want to bring it back to the fact that. I, I think that when you're trying to be consistent, it's about making sure of what, what it's, it's about looking back and seeing what you've done in the past. Because then you can learn further on what you can do to better yourself further. Yeah. So I think when you're looking at being consistent and you're someone that's struggling with consistency, because we all do, I think when you're struggling with consistency, it's important to understand the facets of why are you struggling with consistency? Or are the struggles due to, are you doing too many things? Are you, do you have too many endeavors that you're trying to accomplish in a small amount of time? Are you, are you I, I think here's a key point, are you thinking about something else while you're doing something else? Like we had a topic of yep. being present. Yeah. So it, it's like, are, are you thinking about another endeavor while you're doing another endeavor? Like, it, are you at your job thinking about a side business that you're trying to do? Are you at a side business thinking about your family? Are you, you know, are you, are you at your side business and thinking about your next workout? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it's, yeah. it's understanding where you are in that moment and where, what you're thinking about. So for me, and struggling with consistency, it's, it's about understanding where I've been, understanding the failures, understanding the mistakes, and how I can rejuvenate my life and not make those same mistakes again. So what are the things, for me at least, I always put myself in a hole with too many things. So always for me, it's understanding when to say no. It's understanding uh, when to cut back on things that may seem less valuable when I spend the time and actually think about it. So I think that's truly important. I think for those that are struggling with consistency, take those steps and, and then once you find those things that you're either gonna say no to or that you're going to um, kind of erase, it doesn't mean completely erase like from your mind, yeah. but erase from you know your to-do list for right now, I think that you will find yourself much happier uh, I think you'll find yourself much more focused when it comes to things that you value a little bit more yeah. in this time, in this now. Mm -hmm. So I think I would encourage our listeners to take those steps and see what comes about it if you're struggling with mm -hmm. consistency problems. And 
I'm going to be a student of my own words and do the same. It's nice. I like that. But I don't, I, I've learned a lot from the podcast tonight, and, and there's a couple things with consistency that I'll, I'll summarize here. And it, it's, it's, there's a lot of different aspects of this. If you are, are shooting for a goal, that the accomplishment, right? That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's, it's you may not get there in the time frame that you want to. Oh yeah. You know that's that consistency. So the struggle there is that you wake up, you've been doing this for, for two weeks. I'll let Jake light a cigar here. For, for years. Even, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You struggle for two weeks, you, you struggle for, for years, and you just don't see the end of the tunnel. It's not there yet. If you believe in it, if you're, you're on the right thing, you really have to self-diagnose. Is this just not going to happen, or am I just giving up? Oh, yeah. Because there's two sides of that equation. Sometimes it's not going to happen. Oh, yeah. Or you didn't do what you needed to do, and then you got to look back at that year, you get that that level of that student mind that, that Aaron was talking about. And I, I love that. That was a great, great uh, attitude to have and to have. Uh, going with that at all sides. I also will say, if you have accomplished something, if you're doing that, you know, and you, you had a goal or you're, you're moving forward and all that stuff, and you hit it, don't rest on your laurels. Mm -hmm. You cannot just rest on your accomplishments, and it's, it's that mentality in the sales game, in a business set, uh, game, we've talked about with relationships, your own career, whether you're a business owner, your employee, whatever, it's, it's, it's sincerely, it's, what have you done for me lately? And that goes to yourself as well. You can't just accomplish something and be like, yeah, I deserve everything now. Like, I, that should have been enough. No, you're still going. Yeah. And that's the consistency. If you find yourself struggling with the consistency, you struggle with, I like to, to what I've been really working on is, when I look at the nutrition you're talking about, Aaron, when you're, you're talking about you know diet, you're talking about business side of things, your yeah. relationships, if you find yourself struggling, I think it's it's something that you can really look at yourself and you look back at when were you the happiest, you were feeling the most accomplished, when you were feeling the most yourself and who you are or you're not at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you've already figured it out to the to the point of a day-to-day -day routine, day-to-day -day operational side of it, so that your relationships are checked with yourself and also with the people you care about yeah. and also your business. When things were at the peak. Are you doing the same things that you were doing at that moment? And that's that, that struggle with consistency. That's the true form of the consistency. You might have actually dropped off something that you, you don't even realize. So sometimes you do have to go back and look at the failures, but also look at the successes that you've had. And when were you at your peak in your mind? Because at that moment, you may not be at your peak. So now look back, when were you at your peak? What's different? You may have already, teach yourself, taught yourself a lesson. You might have already taught yourself what you need to be doing. And there, that student that you're talking about, that yeah. student mentality, Aaron, which I, again, I'll say it again, I love that. Sometimes you have to be self-taught and you can actually look back and be like, shit, I'm doing this differently or I stopped doing this. That's why sales are down. That's why my relationship is not smooth right now. Oh yeah. That's why I'm not, that's why I put 20 pounds back on because when I lost the 20 pounds, I was doing all this stuff. Well, fuck, yeah, the last week I've had Big Macs every day of the week. Yeah. Because that's all I had time for, and everywhere I went, I saw McDonald's. And every time I ate that, I felt better, and then I felt like shit. And now it's a week later, 90 days later, and I've been doing this habit for a while. That's not what I was doing when I was feeling good, when I was yeah. doing well. And I think that's a big part of the consistency, is that you've already possibly been there, done that, and now how do you be that student mentality that Aaron brought up and, and translate that for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Sean uh, Hurley said, for sure the podcast itself has figured out consistency, and congrats to 76 episodes. So, nice. We will end this episode on episode 76. Thank you, Josh and Aaron, for being on. Thank you to our producer, Dustin, for all you doing behind the scenes. We appreciate everyone. Keep a look out. Um, go still and check out Whiskey Business on uh, YouTube and see our two, part two episodes. They're one part one and part two. Yep. They were great episodes. You can watch that on and listen to all of those two episodes on any podcast listening app that you may use. Um, they were great episodes and we love those guys. So uh, go check those out and check us out on anything. YouTube, Twitter, Twitter. We do have a Twitter. We don't say that a lot. Yep. Um, but we do have a Twitter. We have Instagram, everything else. So we cheers to that. And uh, we hope that you have a wonderful Whiskey Wednesday and... Stay consistent. <laughs> yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers everyone. Be back on the hundred, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs>